Deep into that darkness peering, long I stood there, wondering, fearing, doubting. Good morning, afternoon, and evening, everyone. This is Hippie Tesla, and welcome to episode one of Eternal Darkness Sanity's Requiem. One of my all time favorite video games, and uh, along there with Silent Hill 2, top two favorite horror games. It's an underrated gem, uh, mostly because it was released on the Nintendo GameCube, which not many people had compared to the PlayStation 2 and, well, not the Xbox, but you get where, where I'm going with this. And, uh, it's a uh, thing that sets this game apart right away is it's a horror like fully horror game on a nintendo system i think that was like along with conquers uh bad fur day this is one of the games that what nintendo pushed you know to be more like this mature console as sony and well xbox was also stealing a piece of the pie <laughs> at the time so yeah it was a it was a big deal for those who have played it for those who haven't there's a lot of people who haven't played it. <laughs> so, I promise this will happen in October. Hello everyone there. Who do we have there? Senpai, Lupka. Did I miss someone? Someone's lurking. Kukuji, hello there. How are you guys? Thanks for dropping by. So, there's this game, you can look at it like a, like a deformed child of uh, uh, Resident Evil and Silent Hill in a way that it's It'll show as soon as we start the game, but um, <laughs> hi nephew. But to like major thing that sets it apart is the sanity uh, mechanic, which, from what I know, like several games later used it. Uh, most notably, probably Amnesia games, but uh, Eternal Darkness was the first big game, at least that I remember. For me, it was the first game that I had like something other than health and mana. And every time your character sees sees a monster, their sanity goes down. When their sanity goes down, the game starts tripping balls. But like it's messing with the player, it's breaking the port wall. These are unique, and this is gonna be great. <laughs> it's I I I didn't know what to what to start October with, um, because. 
well there's a few games i want to do but this one was the easiest to start and sasha's vote was actually the the deciding one i was thinking between the suffering um maybe even re1 or this but this is something i really wanted to do so uh we're gonna we're gonna do this and after eternal darkness i'll think about it i didn't even put it on the schedule to be honest uh, because I didn't get to really yeah okay sis i'll start here we go <laughs> impatient there here we go i think everything's set we got subtitles right uh, that's what actually what i wanted to see but i can't yeah we got subtitles that's important that's widescreen i set everything up before the start here we go flesh bone bound together with the oddest magical incantation this wretched book is where it all began so long ago, before time, before humanity. I am Dr. Edward Reuthus. I am a clinical psychologist. I am also dead. Well, this is a nice lullaby this for you, Senpai. This is not my story, nor even the story of the Reuthus family. It is the story of humanity. Like it or not, believe it or not, as you will. Your perceptions will not change reality, but simply color it. Humanity has been on the edge of extinction for two millennia. Ignorant of so much, and dependent on so few. The Guardians grow restless. Their time once again near. Whether by fate or misfortune, my family has crossed their path. And they didn't take kindly to it. Their attention turns to my granddaughter. For she is the last of my line. And the last hope for humanity. No sis, we're still gonna do Chrono Cross intertwined with this. But I said October's gotta have some horror games. I didn't do it properly last year. I would love to do it this year. Straight into action. Headshots. Now let's do an arm shot. There you go. A body shot. Oh shit. There we go. Three thirty-three. Because the clocks can't do six sixty-six. <laughs> Hello, Miss Alexandra Roybus. Um, yeah, who's this? This is Inspector Legrasse of the Rhode Island Police. I'm sorry to disturb you, but there's been an accident with your grandfather. I'll be on the next flight out. Ah, Miss Roybus, I'm pleased to meet you. I trust you had a pleasant trip? Um, yes, I suppose so, considering. Yes, my condolences. This is most unpleasant. It's a shame we couldn't meet under brighter circumstances. Yes, it is. Can we get this over with, please? Of course. Uh, this way. But I must warn you, it's not a pleasant sight. Understatement. <laughs> I'm afraid there's not much to see. Miss Roybus, is that your grandfather, Edward? Yes, it's him. He's wearing our family ring. I don't understand. Why are you showing me this? Can't you check dental records or something? What is wrong with you? I'm... I'm sorry. It's my job, lady. You're the only living relative, and no, we can't check dental records. 
There's no head. Oh, none of this makes sense. There's no sign of intrusion, and there was certainly a lot of force used here. I have never seen anything like this in my 20 years on the force. We have no evidence except for the body, and what's left doesn't say much. Oh, we don't have a single clue. Well, you better find out who did this. I am not leaving Rhode Island until you do. There must be some clue in this old mansion revealing what happened. I want answers. So do I. I wish I had some. Two weeks later. So there we go. We're in. Um, there's a lot to say about the game. So, you know, I can't think of... I can't... I, I don't really write scripts here or anything. So whatever pops to my head. Like, noted, <laughs> first notable thing for those who've read... Um, Lovecraft story, specifically the Call of Cthulhu, I'm pretty sure. Um, the inspector is also called <laughs> Lagrasse. And there's a lot of Lovecraft influence in the game. Pretty obvious, <laughs> as soon as we start. So, shocked by her grandfather's mysterious death and frustrated at the incompetence of the local police, Alex vows to uncover the tr truth. She decides to search the mansion, the place where Edward conducted his research. If there is a tie to his past, and possibly a tie to his murderer, it would be here. And the game is ours. Oh, it looks pretty nice there. The frame rate unfortunately has to be halved, as it is with Elgato. I'm still looking for a way to interlace and keep 60 frames. But uh, it looks good. It's not as smooth, definitely. But I'm, I'm satisfied. Can't delay this any longer. The call of the mansion beckons to Alex, drawing her back to uncover the family secrets it hides. Alex will not leave till she has learned what happened to her grandfather. Fair enough. Now, <laughs> interesting thing about the game, the sound effects we hear are what she hears. So, if you approach something, like here, you can hear the birds and the wind outside. So whatever she hears, that's what we'll hear. And that's pretty cool. It's not in first person, but you hear it as if it's in per first person. That sound. Yeah. The last weak rays of sunlight uh, fight the Shroud of Darkness. It lends an eerie feel to the last few weeks' events. As the sun sets, Alex will be alone in, the, in this house with nothing but the spirits of old for company. It's got a little uh, like RPG uh, feel to it because of this narration and all that stuff. Portraits of the ancestral Roivus line line the foyer walls. Their faces reveal a dark, brooding edge. There's something about each one that gives the viewer an unsettling feeling. Let's make a save file. So the inventory, like anybody who's ever played a Resident Evil game will understand this, <laughs> or a Silent Hill game, or any like survival horror game from the 90s. Use, equip, check. Yes, yes. Now we do want to... That's good. That's good. Save. Save, memory card slot B, file 1. There you go. So you can you know that there's a there's a year there. The story takes place <laughs> across two thousand years, basically. How? Well I'll stay a while and find out. Let's go left first. There's a clock here. Beautiful carriage clock. The hands appear to be stuck, yet the clock continues to tick, with the time permanently set at 3.33. There is a key in the back of the clock, presumably for winding it. Oh yeah, look at it. Alex picks up the desk clock and pulls the key from it. However, there is something odd about the key. It isn't for winding it at all. It looks like a dresser key. Good. The same. The same. The phone. You're not going to talk about the phone? Oh, I love the graphics of the GameCube. A wooden plaque. Plaque? Plaque is fastened to the door. 
taking the place of the lock. A colored sigil is carved into the wood above a wide slot. The slot is, ju slot is just wide enough to insert a narrow blade. And the sound design. The crackling of the fire. I think that should be audible in the stream. Yeah, slightly. We gotta explore what happened to Grandpa. Yo, Grandpa, what happened to you? Why you die, Grandpa? Nothing here. Nothing here. Nice. Thanks, sis. Assistant sister. <laughs> Assistant producer sister. <laughs> That's your new title. <laughs> Melted? <laughs> A grand piano stands here, awaiting the hands of a decent musician. Unfortunately, Edward never really lived up to that description, and as such, the piano fell into disuse. <laughs> of course it is with you, Waluigi. Welcome to the stream, bro. How are you? Good to see you around these parts. What is this? No, no description. Fuck the description on that one. The illustration features a collection of strange line designs related to each other in a cyclical manner. There appears to be some significance to it, but it's, it isn't a particularly evident. Well, that's going to be the central piece of the game. The table is set for one, Alex's grandfather. Was that a, Which one is a comma? I guess just that there's two sentences. Edward's private nature meant that he never had many visitors, and this is the lonely evidence of it. It was just him there. Just the gramps. What is that? Oh, I never played it on this big TV, so uh do I smell a senpai? Yeah, you <laughs> you smelt a senpai. <laughs> Good nose you got there. Zdravo echo, zdravo deco. Samo da budeš svesna echo, ovo je horror igra, nije kao nije 18 plus horror, ali horror je. Samo hoću da budeš svesna toga. Ali je veoma dobra igra. Ima sjajnu priču. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's what I was looking at. That's it for this part of the mansion. Let's check upstairs. Anything here? No. That's same. Locked. Okay. There's only one place left. Good. A brass frame mirror is set into the wall. The mirror's direction can be adjusted by means of two crankshafts set below it. A curious device. Is it related to the telescope in some way? Should Alex adjust the mirror? But we can't do anything with this now. Anything here? No. A globe cradled in a wooden frame. Its glossy surface is painted in the likeness of an ancient map. A lens is situated in the northern hemisphere above a label that reads There be dragons here. Yar. I don't know why I always imagine that said with a pirate's voice, but there we go. Thank you, Waluigi and Senpai. I guess we're gonna have many piss breaks, right? <laughs> Ah, that's one. And a two. Mm. In the warm glow of candlelight, the Royvis family tree hangs from the wall. Shadows flitter across its surface, obscuring the detail. If one looks closely, the family's secrets are revealed. You know, when I first played this game, I, I stared at this picture for <laughs> a very long time, trying to see the family secrets. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's just like supposed to be flavor text because I never found any family secrets in that picture. These books contain the history of the Royvis family, genealogy, birth and death records, deeds and writs. The Royvis history is a troubled one. As Mediterranean, Mediterranean immigrants, the early Royvis were shunned by other settlers in North America. 
Suspected of witchcraft, the Roivas were convicted during the witch hunts, forcing them into hiding. As memories faded, the Roivas rebuilt their lives. The end. Well, obviously not. We're here. Nothing else. Nothing here. Nothing. Nothing! The books in this corner seem to focus on the supernatural. The writings of Poe, Lovecraft, the poetry of Blake, the art of Bosch, everything with a tie to ether ether ethereal horror or fantasy. It is all here, a reference library to the arcane. Was this Alex's grandfather's secret hobby? Alrighty, boy. Was it his secret hobby? Ho hobby? Hobby? <laughs> So nothing, just just the desk. Just a woman. She looks odd though. A slight draft can be felt issuing from beneath the bookshelf. Almost as though a vent or empty space is hobby hobby <laughs> is behind it. So, curious about the clock, aren't ya? This, this looming grandfather clock seems to stand ominously in the corner, gazing, up this, uh, gazing on this empty room with an almost patriarchal air. Use left and right to adjust the clock hands. Sure. Should Alex adjust the clock hands? Yes, she should. To the suspicious 333. Yeah, we should have a map as well. Yeah, there's a map. Very detailed map. I love maps in games. Whoever ever whoever watched me play anything knows this. And you have the movie player, like all the CG uh, movies that were, well, all the cutscenes basically that happened by now can be played for reference. Ah, secret room. No map redeemable. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. How long is that? I'll turn it off. I swear I'll turn it off. Now these are all gonna become important over time. One after another. A small shrine of candles. Their placement appears to be very deliberate. Matching the etchings on the table and the wall's illustration. The candles are unlit. <laughs> no 10 minutes without the map. Jesus, yeah, it's too long. What was I thinking? <laughs> Though it depends. Like, in Outbreak, I could do it. The Mary Resident Evil games. like, But in some games with more complex map layout, like, I don't know, Silent Hill 3, 4. What else was there? Silent Hill 3, 4. And even this, probably. No. <laughs> Diabolic drawing of a stack of human bodies, each one cemented into place. What twisted psyche could have ex executed this drawing? Though disturbing, it is meticulously rendered down to the subtlest, subtle, bleh, subtlest detail. The precise anatomy of fractured bones and the convolutions of spines and ribs entwine into a mesmerizing sight. Znači nešto kao čeli kula u suštini. This is a bizarre drawing of a cyclopean city. Its immense architecture baited in an unnatural fog. The detail is incredible. As Alex studies it, she can almost imagine the city's inhabitants. Don't imagine them. A painting of a jungle-shrouded building. It seems to be a temple in Asia, perhaps from Thailand or Cambodia. Well, that's oddly specific. This looks like some kind of mask. The face is serene in composure, with a faint hint of a smile tugging at the corners of the mouth and eyes, closed in deep, deep meditation. This gothic cathedral is silhouetted against the stark light. The image is vicious and devoid of subtlety. 
Every brush, sto brush stroke echoes the spikes of the architecture, imbuing a violent feeling, as though the building itself is a harsh imposition on reality. A grim picture indeed. We're not gonna touch that yet. I think that's it. We, we examined everything. Who? Zdravo, Natso! Aha! A large leather bound antique book rests upon the cluttered desk. Should Alex read the book? Here we go! Once I press A here, there's no turning back. The game starts. This is it. This is it. Oh, I don't I don't know who that is. <laughs> here we go. Ready? Set go. I had no knowledge of what was to come, nor did I care. How the knowledge changed me, it will also change you. As you read this, you will come to learn fear as I have. You too will come to understand, or you will perish. To think that once I could not see beyond the veil of our reality. To see those who dwell behind. My life now has purpose, for I have learned the frailty of flesh and bone. I was once a fool. Where is Quies Candamast? Where is Conservandine? Facusatis aquae sumat, et animus eorum confirma, hubna huis the acid modo prima multarum. Love the Latin. Quam primum, Centurio Augustus. I would like to compliment you once more on your battle tactics. Our enemies did not have a chance. Do you believe that it really exists, Centurion? I do not doubt our Emperor's beliefs or his orders. But if we are to retrieve the artifact, then we must be strong and patient. I gotta love the name. Yeah. Me too. And the transition to English. Just so people could understand it. <laughs> Without subtitles, I guess. Uh, you gotta love his name. He was destined to be what he's about to become. Pius Augustus. <laughs> Yeah, listen to the stones calling you to come to them. That's gotta be a good idea. Very nice shots. Whoosh. Examine. The days on the floor is finely crafted, inlaid with gold and gems that Pius cannot did identify. A strong linear design is situated in the middle and is equally unknown to the Roman soldier. Oh, it's a rune, all right. So, we're in ancient Persia now. 26 BC, correct? Is that what I saw? Yeah, it is. So, as she reads the book, the story, we'll learn what happened and how did it get to her grandfather. How does this connect to her grandfather? It's pretty cool. Anything to see here? Uh huh. The decorations on the wall are a mixture of ancient cultures, civilizations that have long since turned to dust. 
Perhaps this dungeon is all that remains of them. I'm an explorer now. Nothing here. A shaft descends toward the next lower level. The ladder is situated on one side of the shaft. Pretty good. That's the RPG part. It's like... Very much like it. Just this one thing? No. Okay, let's go down. A ladder re leads into the dank heart of the labyrinth. Danger lurks beneath, yet Pius' courageous resolve does not buckle. Should Pius climb down the ladder? Yes, he should. Well, that's not suspicious at all, like skeleton zombies on the floor. I think the image even changes depending on where I'm looking. Yep. Aha. Uh -huh. I love how he squints. But yeah, about Latin, I like that. It's the the part with uh, Charlemagne is also gonna have that like they'll start speaking in latin then transition to english now interesting thing is oh shit there's three of them you can aim different body parts oh which which is the attack but i can cut their heads off and then it's easier to cut their arms off and then when they're just oh ow my face Health meter. This meter represents life energy. Every time a character takes damage, the level will get lower. When it reaches zero, the character will die. It's pretty straightforward. Oh shit. Now you can finish them off. To make sure they don't come back. That's it. A strange granite block lies on the floor. Pius has picked up a granite block. This is a sharp edged block of granite etched on its on the side on one side with a curious line design, colored blood red. Can we make things bigger? I I forgot. Oh yeah, yeah, you can use the d-pad to examine things. This is a gladius, the standard weapon of the Roman army. A short double-edged sword with a sharp triangular point. The gladius was designed primarily for hacking and chopping at the enemy, but could be used to pierce armor as well. Well, as we've seen, it's pretty good for zombies. They didn't like it. Choppity chop! I like how he's checking for his head. You got time to kill the others while he does that. Another granite block. Let's save. No, not load. Save. No. Just in case. There might be a stor storm storming starting, and I don't want to risk it. What was Z? I forgot. Oh yeah, that was reload. Okay, so map. You can see how the floors are overlaying. Oh yeah, definitely. Low sanity are the most fun games. The only times I will uh, cure sanity is. Uh, even though, because when you lose all sanity, then you start losing health at a, every horrific event you've witnessed. So, those are the only times where I'll go, okay, it's time to cure sanity. That's it, I think, the only door that actually exists here now. Multitasking.
That's a good strategy, just cut their head off and then hands, I mean arms, and that's it. They're calling me. That's where they were coming from. I don't think there's anything here. We got a... Uh, we have how many? Three of them now. Blue, green and red. What oh, looks like a hammer? The bars across the door block Pius's exit from the room. Okay. Oh, the map. Yeah, they, they, I like looking at the map. Um, like shapes they make. Now it's ruined, but I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> I gotta kill a shit ton of zombies now. No, no, no. Damn it. Woo! Okay. As long as they're all headless, I can do this. Oh, they can hit each other. That's pretty cool. Choppity chop. Another granite block. This one's purple. This wall is prominently decorated with a strange line symbol carved into the granite. Cut into the wall is a square hole lined with scratches as though something has been removed from it. So we know what has been removed. We just gotta put them all. Fit all the granite blocks. What, which one was this? Red. Then green. And finally, purple. All right. That's the door that's now open. Pious, you must prove your worth by destroying this statue. Pressing R, blah, 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 blah. So, okay, it's teaching me how to attack. Yeah. Okay, I remember it. Left arm. Right arm, the head, and the body. Yeah, the sound design is just... Oh, it does look... I'm glad. Too bad about the frame rate, but it's like... We're gonna say this is at 85% of what this game can look like. What it looks like on the TV. TVs are just better with adapting the interlaced retro video standards. Let's finish him.
This is from 2002, I think. It said, yeah, 2002. What do you mean? It's pious, not pious. Hey, Mayo. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It is a great game, really. Have you played it? I kind of assume you did. I know you're also in retro con into retro consoles. Yeah, big thing I didn't mention at the start. So, yeah, I'll actually mention it when the time comes, which is soon. A button attached to a small pile and softly illuminates the room. A bizarre energy seems to radiate from it. Should Pius push the button? Of course, why wouldn't he? Oh, nice. As long as you can play it. I'm currently playing it on the Wii, but, you know, with actual Wii, but, uh, you know how expensive GameCube <laughs> component cables are? It's insane. I swear, by every year they get more expensive. So, you know, until I grab a good deal to get me a pair of those, I gotta use Wii, the Wii because, you know, it has actual component out, which is the best we can do with Elgato here, right? So this is why, this is what I wanted to talk about, because um, here we choose our destiny, literally. We gotta pick one of these. To see the th true ending of the game, we gotta play it three times. Every time we start the next game, a new game plus, the one we picked already will not be there. And they are in order. Oh yeah, it's not gonna say. Sculpture resembling a red clawed worm mysteriously floats. No. Shaped like a delicate dome, a pale blue statuette floats gracefully above the pedestal. And this changes the game, like changes quite a few things in the game, depending on what we do, what we pick here. An effigy resembling a warped angel, shaped from dark green emerald, hours effortlessly above the pedestal so I'm gonna say for this playthrough let's start with this one it's probably the hardest one as well but you know it doesn't matter because we're gonna do all three playthroughs probably in October if people are up for it I don't mind playing this three times in one month to see the true ending so let's start with the green one we're claiming it here we go Wim cube yep <laughs> He had a facelift. Eons have passed since then, and I have learned much. I was once as naive as a child, but now my mind is sharp. With the power of Zalatath, I can now read the thoughts of others and make them raving mad with a mere suggestion. Face me. And you shall surely perish. You got a raid from Fresky. Hello. Welcome, Raiders. Welcome. Welcome to Eternal Darkness, one of the best horror games ever made. Thanks for the face trip. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Sineb. Hi, Simon. Welcome, everyone. Let's give Wesky here a proper shout out. Oh, don't do that. One, two, three, four. Here we go. Yep, starring Buffy the Vampire Slayer. R Resistance, nice, Wesky. I was playing some Resistance this morning, too. I missed it a lot. How are you doing? What's up? Came right at the right time. We just got the Tome of the Eternal Darkness. We finished Chapter 1. We're gonna go into some spooky shit right now. Spooky in many ways. Hello, hello, everyone. <laughs> oh, good to hear, Wesky. I'm glad. 
Here we go. We got the Tomb of Eternal Darkness. So, here's the thing. Save memory card slot B. Alex Roivas. Well, there's many main characters. We just finished this guy that's on the icon there on the left that's Pius. He's the first guy we play with, kind of, and uh, he's going to be the main antagonist. It's going great, man. This is one of my all-time favorite games. I put this, like, probably top favorite game along with Silent Hill 2. It's hard hard to choose, but I'm having a lot of fun. How about you? How was your... Oh, you did say. It was great. Nice. Good to hear, too, brother. <laughs> so, yeah. So, Pius, because he chose... What we had to choose there is basically who's who our final boss is going to be. Here's a little spoiler there. So... Because he touched the artifact of one of the ancients, and the ancients are, um, yeah, yeah, it's uh, Jennifer Hale. But she also voices Zelothoth, who we just chose to be the guardian we go against. Edward Roy was studies filled with, filled with arcade knickknacks, mementos of yesteryear and other cultures. The odor is ancient. The odor of ancient text is faintly noticeable under the peppering of dust that covers every surface except one. The desk had been the center of activity. And not a mote of dust not a mote of dust is on it. Here Alex's grandfather had worked perhaps even hours before the end. So we're going through a spooky Yeah, Jennifer Hale. We're going through a spooky uh mansion trying to solve the grandfather's our grandfather's death. We just got the Tome of Eternal Darkness, which is where the experienced spells and enchanted items can be stored for future use. It has been made from fragments of human skin and bone and endowed with magical powers. Oh, we got another key, yeah. We have the dresser key. And we have the key to the second floor. Yeah, let's try to open that door. We'll come back here for this piece of paper, which is where our next chapter is going to be. So as Alex reads the Book of Eternal Darkness, the Tome of Eternal Darkness, she will, um, she reads the stories of people who interacted with it before her, and you play as them, which is pretty interesting. So second floor, not that we could do anything, but this is, this has to happen. The key comes apart in the lock. The key to the second floor is broken. Perhaps there's a way of repairing it. We got a broken key. It's not a broken shotgun, really, but we'll have to fix it later. The game takes place across 2,000 years. Well, the Pius, the character we just played as, he was... Oh, she's tired. <laughs> that's pretty cool. That's, that's, that's a cool animation. All right. Uh, no, 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 no. Don't take it. Because I just wanted to mention where we just were. Is it here? Pretty sure it's on one of the images. Oh, there, there's this. An ancient Roman weapon, a gladius, is on display above the fireplace mantle. Another token of eclectic junk. And we got it. We got a gladius. Which she can also use. Pretty sure it's one of the images. Strangely, with the Tome of Eternal Darkness in her possession, Alex can read the page. It is a chapter page from the Tome itself. Should Alex take the chapter page? Yes. Chapter page entitled The Binding of the Corpse God. Here we go. The pages themselves whisper. Let's... So the map, there's nothing. Nothing else we can do now, we can go in. I cannot say what was the true beginning, nor am I sure of its end. So perhaps here is the best place to start. I am reminded of ideas I first encountered in Sir James George Fraser's book, The Golden Bough, a study in magic and religion. We are overwhelmed by a very human need to weave a web of meaning where there may be none. Since time immemorial, ancient peoples have dressed up their lack of knowledge 
as gods and demons. I have discovered that sometimes the fates of gods and mortals intertwine and legends are born. We're now in 1150 AD in Cambodia. <clears throat> Thy time is done, great ancient. Forever in shadow will you be master of chaos. And to fade to nothing in obscurity will be thy fate. My master has planned many millennia for this day. It is the true chaos of all things that you now must be entombed amongst the, the beings, beings of flesh and bone. bone. You have a great monument here, Mantarok. It is a pity that no one will ever recognize it as yours. May the darkness claim thee, crawling chaos and damned beast. No longer will thy reign be kept over the ancients you have kept imprisoned. Thou hast seen the last. There's old Pius. So he has been alive for over a thousand years now. This is what? Some 1200 years after what he just experienced. It's wonderful, I can actually see shit on this TV. Not even these mythical fables can keep me amused. There has to be something to do around here. I only wish something that fantastic and a higher purpose could happen to me. Be careful what you wish for. Because it may come true. The door is free, firmly closed, sealing the temple. Perhaps there is another exit somewhere inside. So each character has their own stats, like different running speed, HP, pool, mana pool, sanity. So each character has different sanity. We're about to, to in, uh, interact with the sanity uh, feature for the first time in the game. And like I mentioned before, I'm going to keep low sanity at most of the game. Because that's how you see the most of the sanity effects, which are one of the one of the big things about this game. Where the game starts tripping the player. Me. <laughs> which it did successfully a couple of times when I first played it. Oh, <laughs> the things this game can do. So hopefully you can't see all the sanity effects in one playthrough. There's too many of them, but we'll try to see the, as many as we can. A triangular design is carved into the floor. These etched grooves are filled with colored sand. This, these symbols appear to be related to each other, with one having precedence over another. So they're basically... Uh, rock, paper, scissors. And I'll explain briefly. So as you can see, there's red, blue, and uh, green uh, runes, which are in order Chaturga, Uliath, and Zelothat. We've picked Zelothat. They all govern a different uh, aspect of, let's say, humans, <laughs> of life. Chaturga, the red one, governs the body, physical health. Uh, Uliath, the blue one, uh, governs the mental health. Uh, strength or magic abilities and Zelotha, the green one, she governs the sanity itself and that's why I said it might be a little harder to start with her first because this means that all the enemies, most enemies in the games will be green aligned which means they'll drain our sanity but that's what we want exactly. There you go. Anything else in here? Can I go this way? Oh yeah, look at that. Though I think I forgot something, if I remember correctly. Yeah, in the central hall, that's right. A statue of a goddess, delicately sculpted from sandstone. It casts an alert eye over everyone who enters the temple. There is a strange necklace about its neck. Should Elia take the necklace from the statue? Yes! Strange necklace. Oh yeah, there you go. I knew that I shouldn't be able to go there. <laughs> this necklace can be used <laughs> to heal Elia. Make sure that Elia doesn't move when the spell is being cast. Hopefully we won't need it. Wait, was there anything... Someone's driving crazily outside. 
street racing in a small town. That's it. There's nothing else here. Let's save. Oh no, can't save. Which means shit's about to hit the fan. Jesus Christ, did you hear that? I think you heard that. A bunch of corpses. Is this gonna come back and bite me in the ass? Engraved on the floor is a striking design featuring the sun sinking below the edge of the world. The design on the wallpapers wall appears to depict the time of the day. Perhaps the candles do too. Yeah, that's right. So as you can see, the candle on the right is lit, which is like the sunset. This is gonna, gonna be important for the puzzle. The corpses, we're just gonna ignore them. Or oh, shit, son. You gotta be careful not to step on the tiles. You see some tiles are different, stepping on them triggers traps. So I'm gonna try to avoid as many as I can. Though I'm pretty sure enemies can also step, step on them too. Nothing here. Nothing here. Okay, let's try to avoid it. Yeah. Nice. I did it. That's an Uliot zombie. Those guys are fucking scary because because they can explode. They can hold gases and just blow up like explosives. <laughs> when located by creatures, the sanity loss occurs, causing a decrease in the level of the sanity meter and the character to pulse green. Beware. Sanity loss affects perception and eventually health. Here we go. Sanity meter. Represents character sanity, nothing too scary about this. The lower the sanity, the more the character will hallucinate. Get its head off. We gotta get it, their heads off so they can't explode. Performing finishing moves recovers sanity, which we're not gonna do as much. A bronze necklace sits atop an ancient clay urn. Got a bronze bronze necklace. What is it, sis? Okay, where are we now? What does the bronze necklace say? Glowing gems. Okay. This game has several Spencer mansions in, in it. <laughs> Depending on the level. Is it gonna open the door after it dies? Because this should be... This should lead somewhere. Oh, right! The candles! So I gotta match them. This is... The design... Blah, blah, blah. Press... Y, A, and X to light or extinguish the candles. So, extinguish this one. Because it's noon. Oh, wait till you see. Tell my, like, wait till you see my head exploding on its own. <laughs> and shit like that. Or the game telling me it deleted all my saves, saves. Or just randomly playing a movie. That'll happen sometimes. Just, you see, uh, suddenly the channel changes to a western. <laughs> Engraved on the floor is a striking design featuring a brightly burning sun. Yeah, that's what we did. And this slightly lowered. Opal slightly, but not enough to, for Elliot to get over it. Okay, let's be careful. We don't want to wake any Zambonis. Is that a plate? I hope not. No, it's not. Okay. The, the analog sticks on the GameCube are superb. And so you can make, like, fine... Sneaking movements with them. Very easy. I love the GameCube controllers. Oh, can I go? I think I went between them last. Uh, easy does it. Come on. Oh, nice. Oh, I think I can go, go without triggering any of them. Good. Oh, shit. Here we go. Okay, I'm starting to trip balls. The sound tells you when you're starting to trip balls. So, what's my sanity? Ah, it's still got a lot to go. 
This one's good because it's sunset. And it's supposed to be a sunset. And I put the necklace to replace the one I got earlier. The one I can use for healing. So put the bronze necklace on it and keep the keep the silver one or whatever it is. Watch for the plates. Oh, no plates here. Okay. Rising sun. Okay, so this is the morning, and it's the morning here. Okay. I love how you can hear her bare feet hitting the floor. Oh, there's a pressure plate. Okay, slowly. Look at their moving. It's pretty good for such an old game. Here we go. Slightly, slight hallucinations, nothing to worry about. All right. Now that's a Chaturga zombie. Their specialty is they rip your head off if you don't rip theirs off. Ow. Asshole. Will you please die, sir? She's tired. Oh, that's adorable. Oh yeah, they can also regrow limbs. That's what Chaturga does. You can destroy their head or like any body part and they, they are able to regrow them. No, 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 don't finish him. Damn it. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to read. That's okay. And that's how you replace your, like, sa sanity. Engraved on the floor is a striking design featuring a starry sky filling the heavens. So we want the night here. No light. Okay, so we opened the back door. Because she saw a terrifying creature. They're supposed to... They're not supposed to exist. So basically she's shitting herself. But you haven't seen anything. Wait, wait. You'll, you'll know when it's a sanity effect. Trust me. The ones with audio right now? They're nothing, really. I just didn't want to cure my sanity. That was not... That was... Accidental. Yeah, I'm where I need to be. Aha! <laughs> no, just what would you do if you saw a, z a zombie get up? S supposed to scare the shit out of them. A small pedestal covered with decorative etchings stands before the wall. The blowgun upon it must have some special significance for it to be the focal point of this display. Should Elia take the blowgun? Yes! No, wait, no. Let me save. No, can't save. It's a decisive moment. Take the blowgun. My sword's broken. A secret passage in the temple. Oh, a flute! Gotta save the guy. Shattered fragments of, sh of shattered sword lie upon the floor. I gotta get their attention. Okay, that's what I wanted. Have them focused on me. Yeah, nice. There you go, don't finish him. The guard is great for, for, for Elia saving his life. In return, he offers to repair Elia's broken weapon as a gesture of thanks. They want to repair Elia's short sword. Yes! Ah! 
<laughs> it's a professional uh, blowgun. This item has been repaired. So he did something interesting there. We got our short sword back with a wooden grip, light and durable. A small curve running from the handle makes it better for hacking rather than stabbing. And the blowgun, an ancient weapon, the blowgun propels a poison dart at the enemy, causing the death within several seconds. Yeah, so the blowgun is good because it has damage over time. The guard resumes his duty, seemingly no worse for wear for his recent brush with death. Good for you, buddy. If everyone was as brave as you are. Ooh, more traps. So, we're one floor below. You, you, I love it how the floors stack on the map. Just beautiful details like that. So, as you can see, the the, the image is kind of crooked. That's the first sign of low sanity. Um, it's skewed. It's like tilted on the side. Oh shit, you can't skip that one. So it tells us, you know, that she's starting to lose it. Okay, now the sanity is really low. As you can see, the poison is slowly f finishing them off. Die, you bastards! There is a hole in the device, as though something can be inserted. Perhaps a key or a lever. Yeah! Exactly. So that's where we need to go. Well, let's check. I remember murals here. There we go. This mural depicts a skeletal demon befriending the ancient Khmer people by denouncing one of their fertility gods. Ah! Can you tell who the skeletal demon is? See him there up on the hill? Yeah, that's our boy, Pius. And fertility god, the guy, the guy, yeah, the the monster we saw in the intro of this chapter. He's one of the ancients, the fourth ancient, Mantarok, who is supposed to keep the other three ancients in check. Anything else here? Nope. Oh shit! What is this? Blowgun darts, really? I don't remember ever fighting those those before. What the fuck? Is it because I'm using it now? Or is that where I was before? Wait, no, this is another hallway. Just be careful. Aha! Oh, it was real. It is real. Because they're real, she's losing her shit. Did you see that? She thought she went ahead, but she didn't. Now, if I can go around this, I don't think. Oh, she's. Fuck it, fuck it, fuck it. Ouch. Excuse me. Ouch. Run! Yeah. Oh god. Oh shit. Better heal. Remember the necklace we got? Didn't want to step on that. Alright, she's gonna go. Oh, they're fighting each other. So, Chaturga and Zelotat zombies are for fighting each other. I'll finish this guy. Hey, buddy.
He should die on, on its own. But I can also finish him with this. Oh shit. Stop slapping me, boy. The blowgun is good. I didn't... I never used it too much. And <laughs> Chichurga. <laughs> oh, he wanted to get up. But the poison's killing him. They're really... It, you Sometimes you gotta finish off uh, Chaturga zombies because they're really good at... See, he's ro regrowing his parts, so I gotta finish him. Otherwise, he'll just keep coming back. Look, I, I couldn't even do it. He's regenerating faster than... Faster than the poison is damaging him. This mural depicts one of the ancient Khmer deities being tortured and killed by a skeletal demon. So, it's probably something I I, <laughs> I should have mentioned at the start. So, Silicon Knights, the developer behind this game, is the same group of people who uh, made the first Legacy of Kane game, Blood Omen Legacy of Kane. And it shows in quite a few things. This is probably the direction or something similar Legacy of Kane would take if Crystal Dynamics didn't take over. If if uh, Silicon Knights would ever make a sequel to it, assuming that. Because we do know that Crystal Dynamics did. <laughs> so, uh, we will hear some of the Legacy of Kane voice talent in here. I will say that. There's Pius doing something. This is what we just saw at, saw at the start of this chapter when Elia was reading the book. She was reading about something that happened in the past. Still tripping balls. So now I go to the left again. Yeah, we're going counterclockwise the entire time. By the way, that guy was David Hayter or Solid Snake <laughs> voice actor. Reduced to feeding on flesh and bone, Matrilock. How the mighty have fallen. Hey, Mutation, good to see you, bro. Welcome to one of the best horror games ever made. He doesn't care about her. She's she's nothing in his eyes. Now the corpse god just gave her a gift, a gift, so to say. You are one of the chosen many, flesh and blood. It is now your destiny to fight the eternal darkness. I give you a gift in return. The gift is your life, sweet dancer. The obligation is this. You hold one of Mantarok's hearts. The essence of the Corpse God. The sun that is a source of great power. From those people, you must defend it. Lest they use it to destroy what little brightness your world has left in it. Guard it well. He limps off <laughs> to a better tomorrow. Am I still insane? Oh, my sanity's back. You didn't have to do that, Mantarok. I wanted to be insane. A metal staff is held by the arms of the statue. Damn, the vibrations are strong in this one. Check. This large piece of metal looks to be a lever of some kind. Okay, we know where to use that. Excellent. 
Let's check the room. Look at it. Nothing here. Oh, there we go. A statue of a human female bears witness to the monstrosity that fills the room. The porous stone of its body is covered with the effu effluvial grime that Mantorok has secreted over the years. Eh, keep your... <laughs> keep your secretions to yourself. <laughs> a door of formidable size seals the vault. A stylized design resembling the creature that dwells within the room is carved into the stone. So he tattooed himself on his doors. <laughs> Look around, that's what I wanted. We can check the whole room. You can see the entire thing breathing in unity. It's the same statue, I think. Yeah. Alright, now we have the... The lever, we can... We can take it where we need to, but I remember there was she she could check him. Oh there we go. But she's not gonna talk about him. Oh you can see it from the different angle. That's pretty cool. He's a huge fellow. She's tired. Oh <sighs> back in action. I guess she needs to she needs a bit more to rest. <laughs> they have an invisible stamina feature. So if you make them run too much, they will get tired, which is scary when a lot of things are trying to kill you. Now we don't have to kill anything here, I don't think. No, we can just go around it. We don't need to kill all the zombies we see. Oh shit. Shit. Let the traps get them. I'll, I'll check what's going on there in a second. Not gonna finish him. Ow, ow, ow. Okay. I stopped all the traps. Nothing here. Slowly. There we go. Okay, she's fully insane now. That's what we wanted. Zelotad zombies, for some reason, they die quickly from the poison. Oh shit. Yep. I'm gonna die, am I? I fucked around too much. I gotta change room quickly. Uh, my sanity's out, and when your sanity's out, your health is out too. So. Keep some sanity. Oh, it's not that bad. Though, enough that she's limping. Now, now the fun should start. When sanity is low, that's where the game's the best. I will kill one guy just to have some sanity. I don't want to lose my HP as well. Well, two guys, actually. Well, that's the thing, you don't. That's one of the scary things about this game. <laughs> you really don't know. Damn, don't make me finish, you guys. Ah. That's enough, Sanic. Come on. We want some effects. Let's use the metal staff. And we opened that door. So now we got to go back there. Only which way was it? It's always the left door. Yep. 
As long as I'm going towards Mantorok. Oof. That was close. Shit, shit, shit. Stop pushing stuff. Just run. <laughs> Ignore all the assholes. Oh, look at that. Look at that. I'm getting smaller and smaller. Look at me. I'm so tiny. Well, there is something similar that's in first person. It's called Amnesia. We'll do that at some point as well. I don't know. I like the third person view in this game. I like that the camera is in third person, but the sound is in first person. They're really... That puts you in their shoes, kinda. Anything in inventory to check. So that's the whole temple. We checked everything. Nothing to use here. I think that's it for her. Fool. You should have run. Instead you will die. I can see why. I have no lips, uh, yet I still make the P sound, the plosives. And as Alex reads the book, Tome of Eternal Darkness, she also loses sanity. See, she lost a fraction of her sanity just from reading that. Because those are things humans are, were not meant to see. Or, like, no. Here we go, the candles from the temple. As you can see, the grandfather has collected all this stuff that's co connected to places these people have been. It's gonna make sense later. A small shrine of candles. Their placement appears to... Yeah, it's the same text. But we want, as you can see in the picture there, we want to make it uh, the morning. This is probably one of my favorite chapters in the game that comes now. With the correct sequence of candles being lit, a hidden panel opens. There is a message tube inside. Alex has found a message tube. Okay, nothing new about that. Nothing new in the room. An antique leather-bound message tube, the kind used to transport sealed message scrolls. It appears to be unopened. There might be something inside. Should Alex open it? Alex has found a chapter page entitled Suspicions of Conspiracy. Your presence is welcome, Majesty. As always, I am honored. Our dealings are a pleasure to us both. As do we all. What is this flaw you wish to discuss with us? My concern is with the other ancients. Uliot, Chaturka. Should they unite with Mantrok, they will doubtlessly possess enough power to vanquish even thee. As darkness abhors light, and light abhors dark, 
The others will not, cannot join forces. Vanderhoek will be found, and the others will sink into insanity when I return. As has been foretold. I was unaware. There is much you do not know. And much you never will. Be certain to retrieve Mandrock's essence. It is necessary to cement our place in your world. Then what of Charlemagne the Frank? What do you intend for him? The Frank is an instrument of light. He seeks to unite Europe under his banner. With this in place, my guardians will be hard pressed to perform the functions you require. For your own schemes, Pius. Think of your future. Then Charlemagne will be removed from the picture. Make sure he is dead. Or insane. Or perhaps one, then the other. Just make sure he is removed from power. Of course. He is as good as dead. Yeah, that's true. That's true, Senpai. After the chapter page is removed, the, the message tube is no longer needed. Alex discards it. Alright. Suspicions of conspiracy. So, we're gonna be collecting pages from the Tome of Eternal Darkness, one by one. And uncovering the full story. Yeah, the, the eye that keeps falling off, it's really creepy. It is apparent that the endeavors of mankind are mere puppetry at the hands of the ancients. Whenever a king vows reform, the ancients move quickly to stifle it. Under the auspices of Emperor Charlemagne the Frank, the new Holy Roman Empire was at the height of its power. Punk mit ad dominum et imperatorum nostrum, Caralum magnum francum. Deliver this to our Lord and Emperor Charlemagne the Frank. No one but him must see it. They are words for his eyes only. At once. Okay, not scary, obviously, evil guy. <laughs> Oh, Anthony. Bewitched. If this was meant for Charlemagne, then what will become of him? I have to warn him of this treachery. Remember the church from the picture in the secret room? Here we are. The cathedral. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After Anthony briefly describes his mission, the monk informs him that Charlemagne was last seen in audience with the bishop in the visiting chamber. Anthony's presence is questioned by the monks, feeling that he has trespassed upon sacred ground. The monk seems rather subdued, perhaps out of respect, or perhaps out of fear. Let's not forget... Oh yeah, message scroll. Message scrolls like this were often used to transfer messages securely. This one has a strange diagram on it consisting of a pentagonal shape with strange letters on each at each corner. When Anthony had opened the scroll, something strange happened. That something had been intended for the Emperor Charlemagne. Suspecting a plot against the Emperor, Anthony pledged that he would warn Charlemagne at all costs. And he did. Do his best to warn him. That is. Is there another priest? Yo, priest guy. Visibly, visibly disturbed with grief and despair, the monk sobs pitifully. He recounts that this is not the only death to have occurred recently and wonders if perhaps the order is being punished for a wavering in faith. So there was a death here, huh? Oh, I love this. 
Silent Hill 3, maybe, John. Look, listen to this. I was, uh, I was telling John about the sound. L listen. You can hear them talking behind doors. The sound is just magnificent. Reminds me of Silent Hill 3 in the beginning. John knows which part I mean when you can hear the people through the shutter in the store before you meet the first monster. Muffled voices emanate from inside the bishop's visiting chamber. However, the door is locked and Anthony will need a bishop's, the bishop's key to enter and gain, the, gain an audience with Charlemagne. Can knock on the door and ask them to open. <laughs> that would be too much. Oh, right. Here we go. Elia, the girl we just played as. So this is what, 814, 300 years before Elia, and yet she's here. She didn't die yet, she will die in 300 years. Because this room, Pius Augustus, because this room is, this place is outside all time and space, in a way. And there's more pedestal for more people. Look at all the screaming faces, listen to all the screaming faces on the ground. The closer you get to the book. Well, there's no time where I am right now, where the book is kept. Cradle in what appears to be... Yeah, it is after the Necronomicon. I mean, Lovecraft's Necronomicon. Cradle in what appears to be a leathery hand lies a mysterious book. It is bound in human skin and in intricately decorated with sh shrunken bones. It beckons and yearns to be possessed. Should Anthony claim the Tome of Eternal Darkness? Yes. Anthony has acquired the Tome of Eternal Darkness. And he, like Alex, immediately learns everything that happened before. Oh yeah, I forgot one thing. So now we have the book. With the book, we have all the knowledge that the previous characters accumulated in it. Yeah. You like Lovecraft, Sineb? I wouldn't be surprised. The monk cordially greets Anthony. However, he brings grave news of the loss of one of his order, who fell from the tower to his death. His stone is guarded, leaving Anthony wondering if indeed this is the truth. I mean, personally, I think like stories like this build up on some of Lovecraft's story and... Um, oh yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. Well, Evil Dead 2 was inspired by Lovecraft's writings, wasn't it? Yeah, B2. That was the most popular thing when we were young. The monk informs Anthony that the Order is awaiting the arrival of the bishop so that the funeral rites may begin. There is much grieving to do since this is not the only recent death among the Order. Well, if you guys stop killing each other for a moment, it will be pretty cool. A funeral casket made from unfinished wood. It is not properly sealed and could probably be opened. Yes, open it. Oh my god, what is it? This devil's work. We should get out of here. You have proven what we have feared the most. This poor man has been the victim of great evil. Look how his body has been defiled. As if something has burst out from inside him. Here. Where's Gamut when you need him? And find the bishop. He must be informed of this horrible discovery. Scramasax. Was that how you pronounce that? The Frank and Saxon weapon will. This Frank and Saxon weapon relies on me not pressing a button, on a hefty blade to deliver deadly cutting and slashing attacks. It does not have a hand guard, and it was designed for offensive rather than defensive fighting, which is exactly what we need here. We need to cut us some zombies into pieces. What about the dead guy? Any clues here? Peering in the inside the casket, Anthony sees the body of a monk. His raiment is that of his order, stained with blood that has seeped from many grievous wounds. It is a truly disturbing sight. Well, what the fuck? All the priests ran away. 
<laughs> they are still talking over there. Wait, that's not. I thought I. I my first thought was Blood Omen too, but that's not from Diablo. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Remember the curse that hit him when I opened the thing. He's slowly zombifying. He's like in outbreak mode now. As time, as we progress through the story, he will zombify more and more. A blue urn rests upon the shelf. This urn has been glazed with a rich cobbled blue shellac, instilling it with an otherworldly spectral character. It has a strange sigil on its side. Wait, I think I can... Was it? No? Use it. While fumbling around, the urn slips from Anthony's stiff fingers, dashing itself into fragments as it hits the floor. And he broke it. And a magical... found a magical rune. Here we go! Magic! We're, we're getting into the world of magic in this game. Runes are the key element in creating spells. By collecting and combining runes in different ways, different spells can be created. Spells are magical incantations that enhance a character's natural abilities. Spell list. That's where we'll save the spells. We can create our own spells from the runes we already have. The list of runes we have. And shortcuts. So right now, we have no spells. Not enough components to make a spell at this time. But we do have a rune which we can't read at the moment. So we're going to have to come to that as well. Yep, it is time to rush ahead of the virus gauge. Nothing here, but over here we have a mysterious gold medallion rests upon the desk. Alright, it's a circle of power. Second component we need to cast spells. This one can make three point or level three spells. Well, let's call them, yeah, level three. Describes the amount of power that a spell will have. The more points within that circle, the stronger the spell will be. So now if we go... Yeah, we still can't make a spell. Don't hit the table. A bewildering array of books and tomes sorted neatly on a set of shelves. Mostly books of a religious nature. They sit, sit beneath a skein of dust as if no one has touched them. Amongst the tomes and manuscripts, a book brings attention to itself. Oddly pristine, in the dusty shelf, it doesn't quite belong. Don't move it yet. Let's see what's here. Nothing. Okay, so now move the book. Now it's the same. Holy shit! Oh, that's a Zelotad zombie. And it has a rune that we need. Damn, Anthony. We need to finish this one. Because we need a rune. Now, there was a... He should have access to a torch. Let me see something. Maybe I missed a torch somewhere back. Because torch will need a torch. You need sources of light in this game. Because it gets really dark in some some moments. Now let me just see if the torch is... It's going to be somewhere silly on the wall. What do you mean? Is it applicable to the character? Do I even get the torch here or is it later? Oh, the runes. Yeah, we, we can't make... So these are the runes we have. We don't know what this is and we don't know what this is. We need a way to identify them, which will be the codex. Yeah, whatever... whatever. So whatever one character learns is in terms of spells and key items, it's saved in the tome. And the tome... Well, you'll see. Most of these characters don't get to live. After you finish their chapter. So basically their spirits guard the tome. Until the next hero is needed. And when we play with all the characters. I think there's like 8 or 9 of them. Um, we'll get the full story. In a way. And then Alex needs to do her bit. 
Because as we're playing, she's actually reading the book. So this all happened. We're just playing it. Yeah. I kind of remember... Because we're going to see some of these locations in different time. In different time uh, eras. I guess there will be a torch later. Oh shit! Oh, did pushovers? Oh, there we go. That's the torch. It's good for mostly Mantarog zombies, which are these like regular dead zombies. I gotta save the guy. Alright. It's really good because it insta-kills them and you don't have to finish them. Because they're... No. They're like mummies. Why can I aim at it? There you go. And they can do that. They can flail. Don't hit him. Okay. As long as they don't kill the guy. Great for, grateful for his life, the monk tells Anthony what happened. He was carrying a sacred urn from the baptismal font when he was confronted by the bishop, who was brandishing a large blade and whose eyes burned with an evil fire. Frightened, the monk dropped the urn out of shock and ran. Returning to retrieve the urn, he found only the sword the bishop had left behind. With thanks, he gives the bishop's sword to Anthony, which is the two-edged sword. The monk assembles. The monk ambles around nervously, as if half expecting the demonic bishop to return at any moment. So now we have this sword, heavy single-handed sword with two cutting edges. It is commonly known as a bastard sword or hand and a half sword for the length of the hilt, which can fit in one hand with the other for support. This is a really good sword. We're gonna need later. Now we gotta find all the pieces of the broken urn he mentioned. Mix. That's like combining Resident Evil, basically. Okay, that's all here. One third. Okay, that's it. So we have all of them. Two thirds. No, but yeah, nothing special. Broken green urn. Fragments of broken urn pieced together to form a crude hole. Deep cracks mar its structure, and while it is almost complete, it is far from watertight. Perhaps it can be repaired somehow. And this one as well. So that's basically. We'll have to... Oh, why, why is this one not illuminated? Oh, hi there, Boyle. There we go. A carved stone tablet lies on the stone floor. It's a magical codex. Runes cannot be understood without a codex. Without a codex, runes in your possession will remain a mystery. So, we have a codex for Magarmore rune, which means item. But we don't have a rune. So I'm thinking this guy's got the rune. Yep. Yep, there we go. So now we should be able to make our first spell. So you can find spells, like... Parchments with spells and learn them immediately, but you can also craft them yourself, <coughs> which we'll do right now. We just discovered spell one. <coughs> Bye, sir. Oh, my zombie face. Um. Oh, they're gonna fight each other. Zombie Chew, I choose you. Spectral slap. Give one of them overhead 
mortal strike things, yeah. Ah. Fuck you, buddy. Is he gonna get up? I hope he dies. A red urn sits beside the fountain. <clears throat> a disturbing rendition of a monstrous devil. <laughs> it is control contorted into what appears to be a fountain. What sickly liquid is this draining into the pool, trickling from a scum-encrusted spout? Sheesh. He doesn't like that, that thing. A slab of etched stone sits on the pedestal. A magical codex. Sir, we need you to stay down, please. Burn to your death. I don't want to finish you off. With the spell one, we should be able to repair these items. It's a magic meter. We know what a magic meter is. And let's repair the blue one as well. An aged tapestry hangs on the wall. It's spoiled from the dank atmosphere of the room and the corruption about it. Burn, you beast! You evil doer of a tapestry. Okay, so it's open. Starting to trip balls, slowly but surely. Good thing these are just Mantarog zombies. Very easy to deal with. Just hit him with a torch. And Anthony is becoming more and more a zombie. It's not g getting easy on him. Oh, he looks fine. Nothing to explore here. Aha. Uh -huh. So we need to open this. The iron plate on the floor is carved with three curious circles. Dried splashes have mirrored its pockmark and worn surface. It gives us a clue what we need to do. So the, we should have we should understand all the runes we have now. So we got Uliath, which is one of the ancients, the blue one. Anthrobok, which is project, and Magarmor, which is item. Now there should be religious texts of an unspeakable nature written in languages utterable only by monsters or corrupt humans. You can't pick that up from the bottom. There should be, I think it's here. Yeah, there it is. Among the books on the table rests an ancient scroll of what appears to be paper. Anthony has acquired the enchant item spell scroll. Cast, assign, and check. Torn scroll illustrated with a geometric symbol is accompanied by a small note. The note reads, that which is broken shall be fixed, that which is dull will be sharp. Thus is the nature of the enchant item magic, and which runes it requires. Now we can assign it, let's say, to I don't know Y for now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quick can be cast directly from the book or the shortcuts, right? There you go. We assigned it. And we have our first spell. Covered with arcane artifacts and texts, this table reflects the unholy presence within the church, a seething pit of Iniquity and evil. Evil. Okay, that's the same. So now we need the urns. And we want to put all the urns here. Well, we need all three because we need it to be heavy enough. Not that you can't put anything here, but it's a, it's a late 90s, early 2000s game. Ah, that's right. We need... That's right, I forgot. The red one's okay, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. We need to fill them with liquid. So we gotta go to that demonic fountain again. 
Yes, master. He's turning into Quasimodo slash Igor. Dunking the urn into the foul-smelling fountain, it becomes filled with to the brim with rank fluid. It is a lot heavier now and rife with Forder? What the fuck is Forder? Fo Fotor. Alright. I got more urns for ya. Oh shit, I'm out of water. So, Give me a minute. I've come to return my book. Very well then. For your efforts, I promise a quick and merciful death. Ugh. Here we go, the sanity's low. Oh shit 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 shit. Alright, decapitated. The bishop's key. Let's kill one of them, keep some sanity. Well, oh, we can kill both of these I think. But not the bishop please. There we go. Just enough. Love? Could you get me some water please? I drank my whole cup. Uh, glass, thank you. So we can see something. Nothing there. Yeah, he is slowly. In I like that. Gradually through this chapter, he becomes zombified. A shrine to a god that bespeaks of an ancient evil that grazed the earth before mankind walked its valleys. So what we got? The bishop's key. Gold gem encrusted bishop's key form echoes the likeness of a bishop's scepter. This is the key to the bishop's room. Right, this is where we need to go back now. He's not tripping enough yet, though I think later characters trip more. <laughs> I love when they start dancing. Cha cha cha! Alright, the second love. There we go. Thank you so much. Okay, we gotta finish someone with a scare max. Oh. Look at him. He already looks like a zombie. Let's unequip him. Starting to limp. Yeah, <laughs> beautiful. Oh shit! Okay, he's tripping balls. That creature that I'm seeing, it should be bigger than me. I can't even hurt it. Oh yeah, you can, well, um, if it's not... Not if, um, not if it's that narrow. You can avoid some of them. I'm avoiding whatever I can, really. Here we go, the trappers. I'm gonna get caught by the first one. Yeah, these guys are cool. They can work in our advantage, so... They're like lickers in Resident Evil. They they hear. They can't see, but they can hear. So I want to provoke it because it's gonna teleport me into a specific place called the Trapper Dimension. And this is where you can refill one of the three. Mana, Sanity, or Health here. I'm not gonna refill Sanity, but just as a demonstration. The Trapper Dimension sprawls in every direction. 
Whilst in this place magic cannot be cast and humans are subjected to odd phenomena. The portals cycle from color to color as time progresses and only the quick will escape. So, as it changes color it will teleport me to one of the three. Let's go, or the four. If you go to purple you go to the exit right away. Let's go blue. Just because we can. For instance. So red, green... Yeah, magic. It's one of the spellings for magic. Believe it or not. So going to red, blue or green, you get to refill that specific property like mana here. And then the only exit is always purple, which takes you to, well, the exit. Yeah, me neither, actually, uh, till this game, and then I saw it in Final Fantasy XII, and then later I kept seeing it. It's like an older spelling of the word. Trappers have no eyes, but can sense sound very well. If Anthony can sneak past them, there won't be trouble. You really gotta sneak around them, though. Because they can hear pretty well. Yeah, Magicka too. You're right. Oh, I think... I think... Something's wrong. Judging by the... Yep. Look at look at that. <laughs> I'm walking on the ceiling. There's more of them. Good thing they're all Mantarog zombies, very easy to kill, otherwise this would have been hard. Because the game is more fun when you have low sanity. It is more, more dangerous, so I'm playing with fire here. But all these effects, they only appear when your sanity is low. So I'm trying to keep it at low enough that I can see that we can see all the effects. Well, all the ones that happen in this playthrough. And, uh, but, you know, just enough. Because it, if it goes beyond... Thanks, sis. You're right. If it goes beyond zero, it starts draining your health every time you see a monster. So they don't even have to hurt you. Now if you see them, you're already losing health. I don't know if this is real now or not. It could be both. There we go. Thank you. Oh, is it what I think it is? It's a horror. Yep, it's a horror. Wow, it looks so good on this TV and on the stream. I, I'm used to playing this on my old TV. You couldn't see half of it. And it's kind of weird playing this in widescreen because the game does support widescreen. But uh, the cutscenes are still in 4x3. We want to hit it before it hits us. Oh shit, this, is, this can be bad. Yeah, there we go. It's a Zelotot horror, so every time it strikes me with its green lightning, it drains some sanity. Look at how much it returns once I finish it. Oh, look at him. Such attention to detail. Oh, I can't tell if they're green or... Oh shit, I'm tripping balls. The sword. It looks pretty cool when he's carrying the sword as a zombie. Oh shit! Oh, they're just... Yeah, you guys... 
That's enough. I think that's it for him. I did. Because there are things, there are missable things in the game that will pay off near the end of the game. To get the ultimate weapon, you gotta do something with a few characters. Anthony being one of them, if I'm not mistaken. Here's the hydrate, I, I owe ya. many centuries ago as is the fate of this world despite your faith there is little to save you from the power of yeah there's a lot of familiar voices solid snake is here uh, colonel campbell uh raziel from soul reaver i'm just I'm actually citing the characters, not the, not the actors, but I thought it would be f more familiar, yeah. S like, David Hayter is used for one of the... Yeah, that was him, that's right. He's gonna be there a few more times. That's right. Um, yeah, they are like praying man mantises. Okay, so this chapter taught us the repair spell, which I'm gonna use on the key. So we got the second floor key is repaired. Anything else to pick up in this room? I think we're done with it for now. Well, every time she reads a chapter, she'll end up there, so. That's it, right? So, this is the temple where Elia was in Cambodia. We're not going to be there yet. This is... So this is above the temple where Pius find, found the Book of a Tome of Eternal Darkness the first time. And the cathedral is where we were just with Anthony. Well, look, the characters... The characters will... Uh, several characters will be in different time periods in the same place in the same locations No, where to first? A serene painting of a luscious mountain valley, delicately rendered in oils. The time, time has taken its toll on the surface, which is soiled with dirt and scratches. This is interesting because we're going to see this picture in another. This is Alex's family mansion, right? So we'll play with some of her ancestors, which is pretty cool. Look, the, it's bleeding. That means that's, yeah, she's losing her sanity from reading the book slowly. And the statue is looking at me. Not creepy at all. What was this picture? The details are just beautiful. Is this the next chapter? Yeah, yeah, that also happens. Yep. You can't see, you need quite a few... Oh, nice, we're going to get the revolver. Quite a few playthroughs to see all of the sanity effects, because they're pretty random. Some of them are... There are a few that are scripted, just a few. But 
like even in the same situations you might get different sanity effects which is you know it would be boring it wouldn't be as interesting if you knew when each one of them is going to happen but that makes sense right you played the game before alex questions the presence of a lush landscape amidst these other morbid pieces could it be a single ray of hope encircled by the encroaching darkness One of the drawers in the dresser curiously has no keyhole. In its place is a small triangular design flanked by a magical symbol. Oh, there, there was going to be a sequel. Then it's Dayak. Because Silicon Knights had some issues with when they were doing making the... A game that I haven't played yet. And the first time I played, I'll probably play it on stream. A Too Human. There was a lawsuit and everything and they b bankrupt. So... I know Dennis Dyack wanted to assemble um, the. There was a f not a fundraiser. What is it called? Crowdfunding, one of them for it was called Shadow of the Eternals, but nothing came of it in the end. Very nice. Her sanity meter. There it is. But it doesn't show on the screen, it hides itself, unless you're, like, very low. That was a scripted one. I remembered that, I didn't want to say anything. Page from the Journal of Maximilian Roivas. This is a page from Maximilian Reufus' journal. It reads, Everything that brightened my life now is that brightened my life now engulfed me in darkness. I fed on, the, fed on the light of truth, yet starved on the shadows shadows of lies. I have learned through my lifetime, but no less than a newborn baby. She saw herself dead in the bathtub. Who is it? Who is it, dear? Some bearded gentleman. Just paintings. Aha! Uh -huh. I guess that's the Spencer Mansion. The wallpaper in this section of the hallway is oddly marred, as though the wall it sits on is not even with the rest of the room. Nope, that's an even, that's an... Oh, Jesus Christ. That's another ancestor. Before Grandpa. I think he's next, but I'm not sure. We'll see. The stained glass depicts a glowing medieval maiden, luminous even with the faint light of the setting sun. The maiden clasps a piece of parchment in her hands. The window gives Alex a strange feeling, almost as if it has, if it is magical and not really there. A glowing field of energy protects the window, so we can't really do anything about it yet. It's too dark in here to do anything. Perhaps the circuit has been broken, so she doesn't want to even in, be in that room. We should have, yeah, most of the mansion explored by now. Good. I keep expecting text, but it's just a picture. No, not the... I thought it's the bed. Another 38... Box of 38 bullets. Oh, you don't want to talk about that? Oh, here we go. A musty aroma hangs in the air, and a layer of fine dust lies on all surfaces in the room. It seems as if no one has been in here for a long time. It's almost like a museum. 
anything outside. You can hear outside every window. Ah! A chapter page has been hastily stashed behind the frame of the painting. The gift of forever. Who is that? I forgot. Oddly proportioned painting of a man in somewhat Na Napoleonic garb. Obviously an intentional exaggeration. It gives the painting an oddly quirky feel. Oh, wow. Like suddenly s storm and winds. Let me close the window just a second. Just to be safe. Because it can't decide if it's going to fall or not. <laughs> be right there. Well, I guess not. I'm guessing. I'm guessing it decided against it. Well, it was just to make me get up. Thanks, Storm. <laughs> oh yeah, we got the page. Let's let's read the page. The gift of forever. Oh, or is it Kareem? I Dreams. think it's Kareem. Modern psychology offers only unproven theories. Some see them as the meaningless tossing and turning of a brain settling into a restful sleep. Others see them as laden with symbols of our unconscious desires. To still others, dreams represent the upwelling of the archetypes, normally hidden deep within the recesses of the human collective unconscious. Of one thing I am certain. After a brush with the ancients, our dreams metamorphosize into nightmares. Persia. So we're going to be in the same location Pius was when he discovered the uh, the ancient he chose. I have implored you for years. You ignore all my advances. You dominate my dreams, and I can think of nothing else. I fear I desire you many hundred times more than you love me. My life has become a waking dream, Kareem. For weeks, I have dreamed of an ancient treasure so precious that it changes all life around it. It must be mine. Kareem, if you truly desire me, as you say, then you will find this for me. Bring this treasure to me, and I will be yours. Both of our dreams will come true. I need nothing more than you. You have enthralled me to the point where I can think of nothing else. Promise, if I leave, you will not forget about me. You need not worry. I desire nothing more than the treasure. Ugh! I seek. It's horrible. Leave now, Kareem. And I. You love me, and I love the treasure. That's the order. Why do these people keep walking towards the stones that call their names? If a stone called my name in the middle of the desert, I'd be like, "Hey, where? How do you know my name?" Before I even ask, how do you speak, Stone? So, even though they're the same locations, think of it as like playing Resident Evil 2 and 3, like different parts of the RPD being open. This is what happens in this game. We're gonna see the same locations and different parts of them, sometimes same parts like thousands, thousands of years later, hundreds of years later. Uh, Changed by the passage of time or human hands. We're still missing one. Oh, yeah. Oh, the music, man. Oh, the music. So he's got the talisman that's for healing. Yep. So I have five heals for now. Throwing weapon, chak chakram. Chakram? We call it chakram. I think that's what it's called here, too. I mean, in English. It's basically a stone disc you throw it and decapitate people. And a toolbar. Curved blade with a heavy chopping edge. Cir most toolbars, toolbars had a circular hilt and pommel making them easy to recognize. Yes, he's equipped with one already. Oh, 
Yeah, this is the same place where Pius found uh, Zelotat's um, essence. Or whichever essence you made him pick, right? So we picked Zelotat this time. That's why you need three playthroughs of the game. Because you're gonna finish it in three different timelines. And then all the timelines combined, all three of those timelines combined, actually give you the good ending. Anytime we finish the game without like all three endings, we kind of didn't win. <laughs> You'll see about it. It's pretty good. I think that's it. Oh, wait. A man's corpse lies fallen. Wounds covered the exposed flesh of his body, where his armor has failed. So there's corpses here, but that's about it. Aha! Uh -huh. Right away. There's Elia and Pius. And Anthony got his own. Poor Anthony. But it isn't really. Because it's all in one game and it's beautifully connected. It will make sense. Just let him see me and fucking run. I'm not even gonna kill him. But I do want lower sanity. <laughs> a statuette vaguely resembling a man stands atop a low pedestal. That's Sasha. When she hits, she hits hard. Just go for the heads. <laughs> Look, he's trying to find his head. Where's my head? Where did my head go? Ow! Bastard. Oh, he's got a rune. That's why he's important. I see it now. We gotta finish this guy. Sir. Down, please. Oh, they're all alive. Oh, Jesus Christ almighty. Oh, boy. Alright, I, I need the rune. The rest of you guys. Will you please stop following me? Oh. Oh, you gotta finish them. They keep coming back. Straight to the body. Okay, is there anything further here? I got the thing. This bit. This bit? Okay. Because we'll be in this temple several times over the years. Arcane Shrine dominates the room. Bra Braziers surround its edge while a larger one tops its summit. No doubt each one would be filled with incense to facilitate prayer to insidious deities. <laughs> Deity. I think we need th this. Yeah. I need those statuettes. It's particularly heavy for its side. Yep, that's what we need. A coruscating barrier blocks Kareem's progress down the ladder. Its shimmering energies create the vision of a rune upon its surface. So that's like... Which rune is that? This one? So what is that? We gotta find... We're missing a piece to solve this riddle. What else is there? Nothing here, so... I might have missed something back there. Let's go back. Huh. Maybe one of those corpses back where we started had a 
a thing. I guess I gotta kill him. Does he have a torch from the get go? No. I think I'm in knife frames as long as I'm doing this. Nope. They should all die because they're Mantorox, so they do not they do not regenerate. Yeah. They will eventually eventually die. It's not here. Nothing here. Feel like I'm gonna find it somewhere in the corner. Like you're not holding it, guy? What then? Or should I just make a spell without any any codex, huh? How about it? It's got something to do with this. Ah, I just approach it. <laughs> I already have the rune. I was wondering why it didn't open. There you go. What did you see, buddy? Oh, a torch. The best weapon in the game. We got a magical codex for the Zelotat rune. Okay, so there's nothing else here. I can go back. Yeah. Oh, four trappers. Thanks a lot, game. Shouldn't this work for me? Ah, oh, not because the guy is there. Do I have a ranged weapon? Should take care of them. Do I want to keep at least one in case I want to heal? Shit. Okay. Shrine has risen from the floor, exposing what exposing what appears to be a lifting mechanism. Here we go. To the belly of the beast. Another dead soldier. Lying in a pool of cold blood is a dead soldier. He is the victim of an unseen battle. Perhaps this man died from the claws of the monsters of this place. It is difficult to tell. Why is that difficult to tell? I mean... I doubt he just dropped dead. Random. What did you say? A man lies dead, anointed in blood from the ravages of a Tulvar sword. The wounds deep and numerous seep fresh blood, precise yet powerful, the result of a man's actions, not a monster's. So he can... Kareem is the only character, I think, who can dual wield. There we go. Kareem can now fight Florentine with a Tulvar in each hand. It's a fighting style with these swords. Jesus Christ. Ow. What? Oh shit. It's one of these guys. I hate these guys. Look at how much sanity they bring. They're called bone thieves. 
Oh, not much. That was a weak one, I guess. So this sound now means that I'm in critical sanity mode. Mode? Then, I'm, then my sanity is critical. It can very easily start affecting health now. So I should be ready. Let's finish something. Oh, another bone teeth. Oh, my face, my beautiful face. Oh shit, that's not what I wanted to do. Okay, I guess he's not gonna touch me as long as I read. Another dead man. Who were these men whose corpses littered the dungeon? Unwary soldiers who stumbled inside? Or grave robbers looking to plunder it? A crumpled scroll lies under the dead man's curled fingers. Recover, yes! Shit. These guys can be tricky. It's always best to finish them off. So... Recover. Terror scroll. This spell enables the transfer of magical power from the environment to the self. Restoration of the body, spirit, and mind is this spell's purpose. Requires Nair Cut and Santec runes. So... We don't have one. We probably have one of them, but not both. So recover will recover sanity, health, or mana, depending on which alignment you cast it. But before we continue, do you do you recognize this room? Pius was here. Only this door here didn't exist back in 26, 24 BC. What was it? And this look. It looks like someone was about to build a door there, which they will in the future. So this is the. This is the part of the dungeon that Miller said looks like the hammer. We're there. So we're close to where the artifacts were stored. A metallic plaque re replaces the lock. A colored sigil is engraved in the metal above a wide slot. The slot appears to be wide enough to insert a large blade. Which I don't think we have. Can we use a toolbar? No. Can we enchant? Yeah, I think we can enchant. I forgot about that. You can also enchant weapons. So basically when you attack physic with a as a physical attack, it also deals magical damage. But we need a green one here. As you can see, it's green. The blue is good, so what was it? I think... I think Uliot destroys Chaturga, if I'm not... Because they all have... So each one of them, it's like paper, rock, paper, scissors. Each one of them is stronger against another. Wait, is this where I came from? Oh, yeah, it is. My bad. I gotta get some sanity back. Come on. Can I pass? No, I don't have the right rune, okay. Oh, the, the floor is shaking. The controller is vibrating. What is going on? So the only place we can go is here. It's a horror, and I have wrong enchantment right now. You can't fight blue with blue. So the best I can do is throw this shit at him. Hope for the best. Ow! Shit, so better.
Oh, thank God. That was risky. Keeping the sanity low like this. <laughs> Let's finish him. Do we have everything we need? So we got Santak, which is self. And I think this is Narakat. So let's wait to find a scroll. So we can see how it can work when you actually find the scroll. Oh shit. There was a trapper right next to me. I did not see it. Uh... Oh wait. I do need health. Okay, thank you Mr. Trapper. It sacrificed itself so I could live. Let's wait for the red. No! Oh, that's what I was afraid of. They have ranged attack. Okay. You can dodge it though. That was the grandpa. This isn't really happening. So the funny thing is, he just had a hallucination about her. 1500 years before she was even born. I love that. There we go. That's an air cat. It should tell me, yeah. So all right, we got recover as well. We're gonna, well, we only have which alignment runes we have? Just Uliot, which means it will recover magic mana, not health, which we need. The H ceiling has collapsed, creating an impassable pile of rubble that blocks the doorway. So this is where Pius was. This is where he put all the granite blocks in order. I just gotta remember to find one specific thing not to miss for the ultimate weapon. It's in this. There's the blade. It's in this chapter. The first item I need. This is where I put the, the granite blocks. Even the engine kind of looks like Soul Reaver 2, even though, you know, Silicon Knights and Crystal Dynamics were not in good relations after the first Blood Omen. They all made, they both made their own engines, but it's pretty similar technology. A large Ram Dao broadsword protrudes from a solid pedestal made of stone and awaits its next owner, should Karim try to pull the sword from the stone. Goodbye, Sanity. Yeah, it does. 
The ram, this is a ram daos broad, broadsword, typified by its long broad blade and heavy cutting edge. A formidable weapon and enables its user to strike at many enemies at once and still keep distance. With a sweep, Karim can knock down enemies and can cause extreme damage with an overhead attack. Extreme damage! Yeah, let's let's start with that. You don't even wanna like if you do this. This is good for the bigger en enemies. Ooh. can't really combo with it like with other swords. Oh, stop pushing me around. Ashhole. Emotional damage! <laughs> Damn it, sign up. I didn't expect that. <clears throat> Pardon me, I got a cough. Just a sec. <laughs> torch, yeah, we're gonna, gonna torch him. It's easier with these Mantorog zombies. Dude, I'm hitting you, not the other way around. Mm -mm. No. Is it done? More? Yep, more. Emotional damage. <laughs> okay, here we go. The big bastards. Now this is what the spin attack is for. These stronger zombies. Because there are several varieties. Aside from, you know, being aligned with a different age, ancient. They have different HP and strength. <clears throat> yes, exactly what I, what I imagined, sign up. <laughs> exactly that. <laughs> I will send you to Jesus. <laughs> oh no, not the bone thieves. Finish him. Come on. Come on! Oh! Are we done? Yep. All right. <laughs> Damn sign of. Thanks for that. So, we got Zelotath rune, I think. Yep. Which means now we can cure sanity. And we can enchant weapons with Zelotath alignment. Which is good against... RGB? Uh, it was like there. RGB. I think it forms RGB specifically. So, yeah. So, if that's right, then... Um, Zelotath kills Uliath. And Uliath kills Chaturga. So we just need Chaturga to kill Zelotath. And it's like whichever alignment you take, the one that's the strongest. So we took Zelotath, green one, right? And the final rune we'll get in this playthrough is the red one. Failure. <laughs> yep. <laughs> he would. And we gotta enchant this sword to unlock the door now. From before so we want the do you pick the, the alignment oh no you don't so you gotta go to spell this enchant cast the green on randall and now we can use it in the door 
Imagine that, yeah. I don't know if he really likes games or he's just do doing that for the for shits and giggles, but... <laughs> oh shit, these guys are bad. Better not let them explode. So they can, like, if you don't finish them, they can do that. Yeah. I'm gonna try to get close. They just blow up when you feel close enough. Oh shit. They did blow up. All three of them. Yeah, that that's why you don't do that. <laughs> like, I lost picture, you know? <laughs> Tried to heal. No healing. What do you mean? Like the... Like the fort, fort wall stuff? Yeah. If you mean that, it is... It is... It does remind me of that, of his work. Along the length of the corridor, the ceiling has given way and collapsed, littering the floor with debris. Oh, not yet. We'll go there later. Or should I? I know I shouldn't finish the scenario before I pick up the special item. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Psychomantis is the closest... Closest to this, yep. I know what you mean. Right, let's be slow. I think, yeah, this is it. Yeah, this is the item I need. Ruby effigy. Yeah, yeah. A small statuette with, of a defeated warrior, kneeling in respect to an unseen victor. It is made from a deep red ruby. Don't, don't run, don't run. Let's get the torch here, so I can see what the hell is going on. Is there anything else here? Just slowly... You know what? I do need help. Teleport me, master. It's easier than to use the... Well, it's not easier, it's... I only have four more. Oh, another horror. Stop with the horrors in the healing area. Quickly, I want to finish him while he's squirming. So as, as long as they can't get to me directly, the horrors will do their lightning thingy. You just gotta time it to dodge them, it's not particularly hard. It's also like something at the end of uh, Metal Gear Solid 2, you know when uh, GW goes haywire. Nice. So long, assholes. Nice. Oh. Really? I think that's the one I played the most. Oh shit, we got a horror. Better focus. I gotta make him swing and then hit him over the head. Oh, one hit with the Ramdal. Plus it's green, yeah, it's his weakness. I didn't, oh, it's no longer, never mind. Yeah, I never beat Twin Snakes though, I should. I should get a copy, my friend lent it to me, but I didn't get to finish it. I was busy at the period, so I just returned it to him. I think that's it here. Yeah, it is. Alright. 
See this here? Looks familiar? First first of all, the ladder. Because we'll be back here. Oh, gee, it's dripping blood from the ceiling. A blasphemous sculpture made from human skin and bone. A trestle of bones is cradle, cradled with, within the, this shrine. <laughs> like a nightmarish bookstand beckoning to be used. So we got one, two, three, four levels. And each level has a different color. So you can easily see where they overlap. I think it's visible. Yeah, it's very visible there. So what we gotta do here is give it the book. Give me the book back. You can't examine while running, which is also sweet Dutch. Okay. Oh shit, I should have cured my sanity here. Now I'll just have to be f quick about, about it. Because they can hit each other. That's good for me. Now, first things first. We want to put a shortcut. Spell list, recover. Assign. Zealot that. We'll put it up, as in head. Yeah, it was the the ruby effigy. We're not gonna use it now. We're gonna use it. Two more characters need to connect, collect two more effigies, and then, like near the end of the game in 1992, a character needs to use them uh, to get uh, a permanently enchanted gla gladius sword to Alex, the main character. And so this thing, I just gotta have it in my inventory. That's all. But. So I did, yeah. Restore sanity quickly. And then kill some of them while we're at it. More of them coming. Yeah, don't they? in hell oh my god it's a bone thief ram down for those guys immediately because if it jumps on my head like that that can be tricky slice it is slice shit 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 shit, shit. gotta make it miss oh no Come here, horror. It is. Too bad. That's the last we'll see of it. Yeah, we're in the room. So this is the room where Pius found. 
those things. They came from here, yeah. So he originally teleported here. It was a little different some hundred years ago. Mother brain? Oh, or you mean literally Metroid. Shaped like a delicate dome, a pale blue statuette floats. Okay, so this was one of the artifacts Pius could have claimed. He left it here. And that's important, we need it. did this to you? You were gone so long. I... I gave myself to a nobleman with a jealous mistress. She had me dragged from my bed, and in cruel revenge, lensed with knives. As the last blades were drawn across my body, and my blood pooled upon the floor, she cursed that I would only be with another in death. So much for thinking only of should never have left. I have seen my folly and have already paid dearly. I see so much more now. In death, I know the true value of the artifact which I ask you to find. And it is not for us to possess. If we are to be together again, you must make a sacrifice. Only when that is complete will we be together. Sacrifice? Why should I do anything for you you lied to me betrayed me you really don't look so good anymore you must forget the past despite who you are now you will also become something more just as i am but the sacrifice must be made we must remain here and guard the artifact dark things will come to claim it and you must be strong to keep it from them. Without your sacrifice, the world will fall into eternal darkness. The things I do for love. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Thanks, sign up. I was going to do it. <laughs> Thank you. You know what? I feel like I feel like if you guys are up for it, I can do another chapter because this game is really fun. I could probably play the whole game <laughs> in an evening. So, what say you? We got the journal. <laughs> Sasha says yes right away. <laughs> Let's save. Oh, nice. Nice, nice. All right, then give me Five minutes, just a quick bathroom break. I'll be right back. Uh, it's been, holy shit, it's been over three hours. Time just flies when you play Eternal Darkness. So don't go anywhere, anywhere. I'll be right back with more Eternal Darkness.
Welcome back, folks, to episode one of Eternal Darkness and it is Requiem for the GameCube. The only place where it was ever released. We're gonna do one more chapter, because this is very fun. Beat the half the game in one sitting. I could probably do the whole game if I started earlier, though. Now, her sanity is getting lower from reading all that shit, right? So she too will soon experience. There we go, a phone. Hello? Remember me, Alex. This isn't really happening. Kinda is though. So no not there yet. That knock can really scare a man out of a sudden. So what did we get? We got what did we get in the previous level? We got something that we can use to unlock another chapter. What is it? Spell, 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 recover or enchant item. Oh, she has a gladiator. Yep, that's right. I was actually in the right place. So we have enchant item and we have a gladius. Which is what we need here. We need gladius enchanted with zealotats rune. There we go. You dirty rat. Among the pantry contents is a spice jar with a scrap of paper hidden inside. The kitchen is as empty as the library is full. A reflection of her grandfather's attitude. Always learning, reading, studying, rather than eating. Hell, <laughs> did you see the, the size of their rat? Man, it's ginormous. <laughs> Boulder's Gate rats have nothing on that guy. So, a firmly sealed glass spice jar. The faint aroma of Arabian spices is tantal tantalizingly emanating from it. There is a piece of paper inside it. Should Alex open the jar? 
the lurking horror. <laughs> yeah, that's why all the shelves are empty. Now you will notice that like we keep finding chapters in places that are connected with previous chapters. I think the deal is that Alex's grandfather has set all this up. I, yeah, actually, I'm, I'm positive it is. He set it all up for her to finish the work that was started um, 2,000 years ago. You'll pay what of darkness has been extinguished. The pillar of flesh has been constructed. The master of chaos this will mean the keeper more of the ancients, later. is long dead. The planets will be in alignment soon. All yep. is prepared for your arrival. I will begin the final incantation that will bring you into our world within days. So this is in real time. This is happening now. Will truly usher in a new age. Your guardians, now prepare the gate. Or is it? Or or no 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 no. This is this is in the this is happening in the time era where the next chapter chapter is occurring. The lurking horror, which if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure I'm not, should be Alex's ancestor who we saw enter the wall back there. I will not argue that I was shocked by the sudden mention of one of my ancestors, the distinguished Dr. Maximilian Roybas. It chilled me to my bones. Where had this ancient book come from? How had my ancestor stumbled upon it? I feverishly began to read more, eager to learn his story. It seems that Maximilian had inherited his father's mansion, just as I had. Alone since the death of his wife, and since his children had their own adult lives, he explored the house to discover his family roots. 1760. It has been two weeks since the death of my father. You recognize their voice to me to look over the mansion now i am truly alone and forced to stab you king life here in rhode island i intend to make the mansion mine and live in it as my forefathers have to continue the family tradition the mansion has its secrets i'm sure and in my time here i have to make them mine So another actor is credited as Maximilian Roivas, but I'm like 99% sure that's Michael Bell right here. Because I've seen a few sites mentioned that Michael Bell did voice him, so probably there was a change of actor mid-development or something like that. But that is, I am, like I said, 99% sure that's Michael Bell, the voice of Raziel from uh, the Legacy of Kane series. Sasha's 100% sure. Mickey. Wait, what does Mickey look like? Uh, yeah, that's gonna be grand the grandfather, but like an older version of Mickey. Flintlock pistol ammunition. The desk cluttered with notes and writs, mostly business to do with the Royvas estate. Oh, I don't know. Then we'll see. picture small collection of maximilian's medical journals references and reports now maximilian has a unique power in this game which is or skill it's not as you can see the eyes as i scroll on the circular bone spinal thing the eyes indicate the page right it's skipping that fourth page because we're gonna unlock it here 
you can do autopsies being a doctor and all so it's like a scan from final fantasy the closest thing i can think of or like any rpg um it's he can dis dissect the uh, creatures and like give you insight about their weaknesses and strengths small collection yeah that's the same another picture of a mansion nothing here he's very slow though and his hp is pretty good hp and sanity and medium tier mana let's save before we do anything equip oh medical journal there we go used to take notes on medical and pathological analysis flintlock pistol a French flintlock holster pistol was in use from the 1680s. As a muzzle-loaded pistol, its rate of fire is rather low, but it packs a powerful punch. So it's like a hand cannon, almost. Did I save, though? I know I wanted to. Nope. There's a thing we can do here to get a very powerful weapon. The elephant gun. We get it with Alex. Or was it... No, with Edward. So we got to do something with Maximilian. And when once we get to 1960s with Edward, Alex's grandfather, we'll be able to use the pistol. If I remember correctly. Or maybe it's with Edward specifically. No, actually save the servant. But you were close there. You were close there, Sinem. The servant is preoccupied with duties. Yeah, you can't kill them. See, I can aim at his head or arms. I can't see where very well, but it says <laughs> a state-of-the-art interior outhouse. <laughs> but I guess because toilet or bathroom didn't exist in those times, so it's like the outhouse meant the outhouse. But an interior outhouse, it's the first time I've seen that. It made me giggle. Polished teak and mahogany finish it is truly a sight to behold and experience that's it nothing else here this is the track that was playing just before it's a shitter <laughs> uh, while I was on my bathroom break black rose it's called a stained glass window, resplendent with bright colors and exquisite workmanship. Workmanship. There is something odd about it, perhaps the curious detail of its shapes and content. Just the sun. Wait, was there something? No. The door to the servants' quarters is securely locked. Maximilian, however, can't help but feel uneasy. An ominous presence lurks behind the door, making the hairs on his neck stand on end. So that's the door that was walled off in the present. A gritty portrait of a man with an overbearing countenance. What's countenance? Hardly a reassuring soul. Maximilian wonders if that trait was prevalent 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 in his ancestors oh there's the clock from from the foyer it's here in the past See, remember the scratched painting in the present there it is well it was new the painting has a quaint reassuring feeling behind the brushwork which is probably why it has been kept in the family for as long as it has thanks sis Ah. More flintlock pistol ammunition. On the bedside table is an open letter. 
Letter 1. A letter written with some precision in long hand. Dear friend, the antiquity of which you ask is indeed the tome of eternal darkness, or a copy of it, at least. Its secrets are still hidden from me, for I have been unable to read it, as have most scholars who have tried. It will remain within the sanctity, sanct no, sanctity of the mansion, for in the wrong hands it would be a powerful weapon. Peruse it, if you will, but beware its magic. It is a harsh mistress, Aaron Royless. So, that's Max's father, I believe. There's nothing on the drawer yet. The servant mutters under his breath, not realizing that Max is nearby. He appears to be distressed at his lot in life, working all the time. <laughs> Me too, buddy. Another codex. Oh, there's something here. The mirror's grim reflection returns Max's questioning gaze. His face racked with sleepless nights and a strange gleam in his eye hint at a growingly odd demeanor. Flintel of pistol ammunition. Oh, look, the bathroom in the past. I like how things... It's not... You can see it's the same room, but you can see it's in a different... In a different era. Oh. That's the same. Ooh, you can see the entire mansion from here. I forgot to check if we can do that in the present. What about you, ma'am? Whilst performing her duties, the servant made idle chit chat about the room's temperature. Okay. His stamina is really low, so he gets tired quickly. That's his weakness, that's right. Low speed and low stamina. He's a doctor in the 18s, 1800s, after all. Another letter. A letter scrolled by a panicked hand with clotted ink. So you can see the whoever wrote it was more distressed than the last time. Dear friend, the house has been forsaken by the ancients. I dare not enter it for fear of my mortal soul. I would suggest that you leave also. Bring the book. It is a far more potent tool than you have learned and may well swing the balance in our favor. A. Royvus. Was it Aaron Royvus, right? Yeah. That's the same for Royvus portraits. So many secrets to uncover in the house. Maximilian is inexplicably drawn back to the house to continue the exploration. Cold moonlight filters in through grime-stained windows. Even with servants cleaning every day, the house never seems to get very clean. As if the very nature of the house itself is soiled. Oh, is that what's wrong with my house, huh? Bidding Maximilian a courteous good day, the servant returns to his duties. Uh, duties. So you will know there's no door here in this era. The library wasn't built yet. There's the picture from the dining room. So yeah, RGB. Literally, Chaturga, Zeltat, Uliot. And Mantorok to bind them all. 
The wall is decorated with a colored triangular design. Although Max has seen this particular embellishment time and time again, its significance still evades him. Another painting of the mansion's foyer hangs on the wall. Max wonders why the artist would paint an inaccurate picture of one end of the room with such detail and clarity that it approaches realism. Well, yeah, it just tells us there is a door there. We can't see it yet. But we're about to... Anything here? Ancestors. Under codex, there's the pantry. A pump handle is sitting on the barrel inside the pantry. What's it doing here? Well, it's your house, man. Look! Like he's stocked. For 1800s, this is pretty well stocked pantry. Maybe stop waving the gun around your uh, servants. I think they'll appreciate that. While it's going about her duties, the servant casually remarks about a strange quality hanging in the air. This odd comment makes Maximilian feel like something is quite amiss. Why would she say that? Cozy fireplace is the focal point of the kitchen, lending a good deal of warmth to the austere room at night. It is beautiful. With a kind smile, she asks if Maximilian has, has an appetite, as she is preparing a hearty, hearty meal for the evening. Oh... That's wonderful, ma'am. I appreciate your work. Keep it up. The good work. No piano yet. No, nothing here, actually. Table. Oh, uh, look at that, the table for six people? Yeah, I never thought about it. I never saw it so, so well in this game, so I don't know who the six people are. The servant inquires if Maximilian requires anything of, a, of service. Yeah, I need you to help me explore my house. Oh, that's the same picture. There is something written beneath the image. When darkness spreads its wings before my master Zelotat's greatest foe, the path to truth will be open. Who's Zelotat's greatest foe? RGB. I'm gonna say Uliot because he kills. Uliot. No, oh, wait. Is that Uliot? Yeah, that's Uliot. Or is it Mantarok? Oh shit. Nope. Oh! Zelotat. It's Chaturga. What the fuck am I doing? Before I get out, yeah. Let's go! A curled scroll of aged parchment sits atop a stack of dusty books. It is covered with strange diagrams and writing. Oh, reveal, reveal invisible spell. An ornamental saber is displayed on the wall. We got a saber as well. Cavalry swords, like this saber, were used chiefly as an item of ceremonial dress for officers. The brass knuckle guard was a style popular with both American and English cavalry officers in the second half of the 18th century. Hi everybody! Hi Dr. Carter! <laughs> Hi Carter, how are you man? Welcome to Eternal Darkness. Now I know you know this game. We spoke about it. Oh yeah, he can also dual wield. He's the second character that can dual wield. Dual flintlock pist flintlocks pistols for those who wish to fight akimbo style. The French, yeah, that's the same. Akimbo!
This appears to be a wax rubbing of some kind of carved pattern. The central point is an odd line design. A symbol of something? Is just a shield? Just a bookshelf. Still no door here, because no library. So the secret room was built before the library. Same cathedral. Ah, I'm sorry to hear that, man. I hope it's just... I hope it's nothing. Mmm, you make your own bread. Kudos. He's gonna learn everything. Now I gotta rescue all the servants. As Max lifts the Tome of Eternal Darkness, a letter slips out from between the pages. Deftly, Max catches it as it drops towards the floor. Woo, kitty! <laughs> a letter scrolled almost in indecif indecipherably by a wavering hand. So they're like way worse than last time. Dear friend, as I suspected, the ruins of Anga that blasted Necropolis lie deep under the site of the mansion. The accursed servants of Zelototh are Kitty, please cooperate. Are so close I can almost hear their chittering. There is a secret opening in the basement, and from there we can gain access. I urge you to gather some men and seal it, or better still destroy that damn place. I have, slowed, I have stowed something that we, you will find useful on the upper level. Look to the light and you will find it. I wish that I could be at your side, but my ailment worsens daily and I know that my time is short. AR. Just keep yourself safe, man. Okay, shit's gonna hit the fan. We were just talking, uh, Sasha and I, well, me, but Sasha, <laughs> all of us, let's just say all of us. Maximilian is actually Michael Bell, voiced by Mac Michael Bell. Even though the credits lists an uh, list another actor, I think it's something happened in production that they had to change the actors or whatever, but that's most definitely Michael Bell's voice. Oh shit, they wanna fight me. That's it. So, since it's an Uliath, we don't have Chaturga. So, there's no point in enchanting the pistols. But I can still. Don't kill her! Oh, I killed her. You asshole. You gotta do active reloading like an outbreak. <laughs> Quickly do an autopsy. So like I said, he can... He can, uh... He can do autopsies and uh, basically like scan enemies. When an autopsy has been performed, Max can view the new entry by turning to the journal section of the tome and selecting the autopsy at the bottom of the page, blah blah blah. So here we go, a bone thief. The creature wears the skins of people to protect itself. Analysis of Zelotot Bone Thief. Because like I said, you have to finish the game three times to get the true ending with all three uh, alignments. Um, it's... there. Where's the fourth page? There we go. What the hell? I'm missing a page now. Wait, where is it? Oh, that's not the fourth page. I remember now. It's here. Autopsy. Yeah. So, all the previously... 
executed autopsies will rem will be remembered in next games. No, no, no. In new game plus. Oh jeez, they're really heavy on the stamina. Let's get him with the pistols. Listen to this. Not this. Hold on. So we just got the real invisible spell. Thanks, guy. Attempt autopsy. <laughs> I can't believe this. Oh, there's no... Needs to be reloaded. That's pretty cool. He tried, but he couldn't. Okay, this. Listen to this. I will not argue that I was shocked by the sudden mention of one of my ancestors, the distinguished Dr. Maximilian Roybas. It chilled me to my bones. Where had this ancient book come from? How had my ancestor stumbled upon it? I feverishly began to read more, eager to learn his story. It seems that Maximilian had inherited his father's Too bad we can't skip this part, but here he comes. I had. Alone since the death of his wife, and since his children had their own adult lives, he explored the house to discover his family roots. It has been two weeks since the death of my father, and it has finally come to me to look over the mansion. Now, I am truly alone. I can almost to start a new hear him say, here in Rhode Island. Cain, Cain's name. I intend to make the mansion mine, and live in it as my forefathers have, to continue the family tradition. The mansion has its secrets, I'm sure, and in my time here, I have to make them mine. PH. Yep, totally Raz Raziel, right? They're back to normal because the thing's not there. Ah. Uh, so it's it's with Edward. It's with Edward. I gotta do that bit. Oh, this guy still wants to fight me. No, thank you. Just leave him. Do I want to leave him? There's just gonna be a zealot that bone thief, right? Yep. Yeah, he gets a lot of sanity from them. So no autopsy there. Oh, we gotta use Reveal Invisible, that's right. Yeah, maybe that's the other actor, but we'll listen to it together as I finish this chapter. That's at the end of this, right? So we'll see. Do we need something else? All oh, right, because it's green, RGB, we need Chaturga to uncover this. So I gotta find that. Did I switch? Yeah, real tech, real tech audio. That could be the other actor, I think, if anything. So he said, look to the light. You hear that? Oh, I think he's just going mad. There's nothing really there, it's just sanity effect. Max spies an envelope that has fallen behind the pedestal. Fallen, perhaps, or been hidden there. 
Despite his, uh, his excitement at this discovery, Max senses something odd about it. A sense of evil. What are you looking at? What was he looking at? Paper envelope sealed with a glob of melted wax. An old, odd rune is pressed into the wax. There appears to be something heavy inside. Should Maximilian open it? What is it inside? Should I, should I use the rune first? If it's blue, R, G, B, B for R. Huh. Let me try something silly that I haven't tried yet. Oh, cannot be enchanted. Okay. What did you say? Then just open it. Possibly. Possibly, yeah. That's a good theory. Inside the envelope is a letter addressed to one of Max's father's aides. And a basement key. The letter written in a scrawling hand reads, Dear friend, as I expected, the beasts are drawing closer to our discovery. They want the book for themselves, it seems, and do not want us to have it in our possession. I have taken steps to ensure their, their ilk will not touch the key in this envelope, should you fall prey to their claws. The envelope containing the basement key has been sealed with a corrosive magic. If one not aligned to us tries to ca handle it, it will re be, it will be released, inflicting pain, suffering, and a grievous blow to their sanity, should they have any left. Be swift with your task. A.R. Small antiquated key, somewhat rusted. Oh, shit. So that happened. Are we live? Am I live? Better, better refresh. I haven't streamed this long in a, in a long time. So I forgot this may happen at all. Yep. Sorry, I forgot. It's time for the IP switch. I just didn't set an alarm. Like I said, I didn't stream. I didn't have a session over three and a half hours in, a, in quite a while. So we're back, yeah. About my IP switch? <laughs> About my dynamic super protected that nobody asked <laughs> internet nah pff, i would celebrate carter what the fuck oh yeah i would celebrate my man like everybody would know that it happened another horror with a rune this time i just time it real well the sessions so we can avoid that but i kind of got Entrance here, so. So what? Are, why is my sanity back to full? That's probably good for this battle. What do we want? <laughs> it's four hours now, though, so that's kind of better. Makes better sessions. I'm glad. <laughs> can't believe you remember it was two hours. <laughs> Let's just shoot him in the face. That usually works. Ow, my spine. I used it to walk and exist. Listen here, you asshole. Ah, oh, I thought I dodged that. I guess not. Or 
I mean, you can expect a lot of shit from me. Well, that was a neat hallucination that persisted. So we got the Chaturga rune now, right? Yep. So we have the three basic uh, alignment runes. Damn, we're already this far in the game. What the hell? Oh, he's... Yep. Sometimes they do that when they lose sanity. They just flail the sword randomly. Sounded a little like Mobius there. Imagine. Oh, we got those guys now. Okay, do I need something? Actually, I do need HP, but I also can cast my own spells. So, fuck it. I should put... Yep, first thing to do, I should have done, is recover, assign, the Chaturga. There. Heal myself often. What else? Actually, you know what? Mm. There. Left. Because I know what's going to be on Y. I remember. <laughs> Gesundheit, Max. <laughs> Alright, so we got to reveal invisible. Since it's green, then it's got to be blue. No, red, green. Yeah, red, actually. Red. Then we need a key. Okay. Yeah, you can't save. The darkness is coming. Because this is going to be a little... Don't explode. Oh shit. Oh shit. Left arm, left arm. Oh. Can you autopsy that? Yeah. Kick him while he's down. There. So we can hear actual B BGM. We got Zelta zombie. Limbs regrow as phantom entities when severed, causing deep-rooted insanity in the observers. The wrappings of the mummy are highly combustible and catch fire easily. So this tells us that when you cut off their limbs, they come back. That you've seen that, like, like transparent green limbs, and just observing that lowers our sanity. But also, it's weak to the torch, which we know, because I said it. <laughs> and a zelta horror, its sire, its eyes are its weakness. The creature is highly dependent on sight rather than sound. Unlike the... <gasps> Can I do an autopsy on a... Oh... On a on one of those guys. What are they called? Uh, trappers. Yeah. Look at the bug on the screen. Did you see that? Like a spider on the screen. I'm glad Sasha's not here. <laughs> You would think it's on your actual screen on an old TV. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's a rare one. Yeah, I can't remember the trappers. Oh shit, there's more of them now. What the fuck? Let's see where this goes. Ah, oh, nowhere. Okay, so I need the pistol. So I can shoot them. 
I don't think you can on trappers though, we'll try, because you can't really dissect them, you can't finish them. Oh, I just shot myself reloading. No, not A, B. Let me try though. Yeah, you can! Bravo, Carter! That's the only place you can find them. <laughs> nice! Yeah, you can finish them. But it stays there. I think that's the only trapper you find with him, but I'm not sure. Either way, thanks, Carter. Thanks for encouraging me to do that. Let's check it out. Nice! I don't think I ever did the trapper. Cis like structures on the tail channel energy. Oh god, it's horrible when you look it up close. It's got little guts and everything. Thekthi. <laughs> Brave Sir Ronit. Oh, Raid Chopper, we got a raid from Kukuji. Thanks for the raid, Kukuji. How was your stream? Welcome, Raiders, welcome. Hello there, Coco Bean. Carter, it's a reference to uh, <laughs> Monty Python. <laughs> welcome, Raiders, welcome to Eternal Darkness, one of the best horror games ever made. Oh, you played Dino Crisis for the first time. How, how did you like it? It can be a scary game when you don't know what you're doing. Hi, Coco. It's going get great. Like, we did a lot in one session. I gotta say, I didn't expect to get this far, but I can't stop playing this game. <laughs> I love it. It's one of my favorite all-time games. Like, top five, easily. As far as horror games go, I'm gonna say um, I'll right up there with Silent Hill. Oh, nice. Nice. It's a really good game, Dino Crisis. So yeah, welcome Raiders. I'm Hippie Tesla, in case you don't know me. Uh, I stream retro games from actual hardware. No emulation. I like how that green button is actually transparent. Because it's green. <laughs> because of the green screen. Uh, and we're doing Internal Darkness now. The first day of October. A game I wanted to play on stream for a long time. So here we go. With a fresh save file. We're going to do all three playthroughs for the full ending. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice, Carter. Nice. What was I doing? I did save. I got the... Uh, yeah, I gotta go back downstairs. Oh, the servant's back. Eyes wide with fright. His head twists frantically left and right. As if trying to see some invisible horror stalking him. Have you no eyes? Can't you see it? He cries. Oh, they're succumbing to insanity. Eternal darkness? You know about it? Do you know anything about it? For, for those of you who don't know, it's basically... Oh shit, okay. It's a it's an excellent horror game that was exclusive for the Nintendo GameCube, which is why few people played it. It was made by Silicon Knights, the people behind Blood Omen Legacy of Kane, and Two Human, among other things. Uh, it uses the sanity mechanic, which whenever your character sees a creature, uh, they lose sanity and that can cause various hallucinations which then affect the player. Hopefully you'll see a few of the good ones right now. Because I'm trying to play as with lowest, that's the green bar. I'm trying to play with the lowest sanity I can to show off the most, most of the sanity effects I can. So there's no elephant gun here, that's later in the field. Oh shit, here's one. See that? Yep, yep. It 
It's kind of like a child of Resident Evil Silent Hill. Because it mixes the play styles and the type of story. Yeah. Yeah, one of them, like Carter says, is you try to save the game. And it just tells you your car your memory card needs to be formatted. Do you want to do it? You're like, no, just save. And it's like, oh sorry, your save has been deleted. Bye. <laughs> nice. I'm glad, Kukuji. So is there anything else to pick up here? We're going to Enga. All right, we got this. Scroll of paper. Damage field spell. That's going to be very useful. We do need a few more parts. Magical codex. This can't be a really good time for uh, for these <laughs> for the sanity effects. Damage feel reveal. Uh, so I do need. What does it do? Let's see. <laughs> nice. It's good when you don't know what's real. That's that's a good aspect of the like good horror aspect of this game, especially for the first time players. Like the first time they did that or when it just switched to a movie suddenly like <laughs> it really <laughs> really made me feel uncomfortable. This incantation exerts a force of mystical power within the confines of its runes. Nothing may enter till it's dispelled. Bankrock and Redgumor runes are needed. Do we have them? We have the codex for Bankrock. Redgumor area. So protect area. We can also make protect self, I think. Do we have protect? No, that's the one we're missing. We can make some new spells before finding them. So, for instance, project self. Let's try that. New spell. Uliot, because I like his voice. Project self. Nothing. How about project item? Enter book. Project item. Oh, yeah, we have that one, okay. One I do remember. Nercat, what was it? Absorb area. Oh, we have that. And reveal invisible. So what else can we do? Self area project. I think nothing for now. We do need... We do need bank rock. Oh yeah, the fake ending. I've seen that, that one twice, I think. A rusted pump stands by the well. Its handle appears to be missing. Well, you're in luck, pump. I appear to have a pump handle on me. That, got, that had to take hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nothing there i already checked but i just gotta be sure yeah that's later there's gonna be a door there so before we go down there we do want to use enchant item i think i did assign it already red yeah chaturga and put it on y there you go we can use that on both the flintlock because Chaturga overpowers Zelotath. We'll need it downstairs. Oh no 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 no! I think he's Doctor Lindsay is next. If you mean him. Now save. Yeah, there you go. Here we go. 
We're going to a dangerous place now. This is what Aaron Roy was, was talking about. What's going on here? This is foreshadowing for the ending of his chapter. Get its arms. Oh. That's the one we were missing. Alright. So now that we have the damage field. Attempt autopsy, yes. How fantastic. Finish him, but do I want to? No, I don't want to recover my sanity, so I'm not gonna finish him. 27, I do want to reload my flintlocks and read that entry. Mantarog zombie. A living human corpse. It has no special attributes or weaknesses. It is very weak, composed of dried sinew and skin. That's why they are easily flammable with the torches. There's nothing here yet. Damn, Max, you're so slow, man. Is there gonna be a cutscene? No, that's not with him. Max is incredulous at the site. A desolate ruin of a fantastic city, built into a huge, naturally formed cave. Jutting spires and looming buildings poke through the dense fog. Light ebbs through the city, crackling in the wake of the energy spilling from a light source held aloft by unseen forces. Alright Kukuji, thanks for the raid again. You have a good day. I should have tried to make more magic. Now I'm locked in here, but that's okay. I think that I could have made the protect self. No wait, I can't. Yet. Okay. So what he did there was he cast a spell so I can't go back. So runes protect self. I should have done that. So new spell. Yeah, we don't know it yet so it's spell 7 but that's the protect spell. Now since he's red we, he's green, we want to be RGB, we want to be red, so he can't get us. We want to be his kryptonite. Yeah. Oh, did they do it? Here we go. That was quick. <laughs> I guess it's just a legal mess. The beast was dead, but not without its toll on To make a to make another one. And there was an entire city of them. Ha sha geek. Raziel. I tried. I tried to tell them. But they wouldn't listen to me. Damn them. Damn their lies. They didn't believe me. Strange creatures. The world in peril from unseen foes. Darkness. 
twisted and they jeered and threw me into this forsaken place. A place of empty souls and fevered thoughts, reeking of fetter and decay, thinking me mad with delirium. <laughs> The fools cast away their hopes of salvation by locking me in this damned asylum. May the rats eat your eyes! I am now lost to your cause! The darkness comes! It will damn us all! That is so sad. Yeah, it is him. He is just magnificent. <laughs> All right, another story done. There we go. <laughs> this isn't really happening. Carter is psychic, apparently. <laughs> I'm so glad that just happened. The Gladius is still enchanted, because the time apparently doesn't flow while we're... while we're learning. So, what do we have? First of all, save. What would the next chapter be? Reveal invisible and damage field. Okay, I know what's next. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's Dr. Lindsay's next. And that's a long chapter. So I'm going to say I'm going to end it here for tonight. But I've been here for four and a half hours. Got up. And got to rest a bit. I did have a lot of fun though. Thanks everyone for watching tonight. Thanks Carter for dropping by. Sexy Weski and Kukuji for the raids. Let's see who we can raid. Pass, pass the love. Who's streaming on a Saturday night? Well, Saturday afternoon, depending where you are. Thanks, Carter. You too, man. Who's around? Oh, there we go. Dr. Best is doing RE3. Let's do that. Let's raid Dr. Best. Why not? It's a good segue. Really good. Thanks for the stretch, Carter. That's it for me for today. Say hi to Doctor for me. I'll see you. I'll put it in the schedule. Maybe tomorrow, maybe Monday. We're going to finish Eternal Darkness and Chrono Cross and go on for more horror games, of which Chrono Cross is not one. <laughs> Bye!